The best in poker news, entertainment, and more. This is the Mark Oak Show. Everybody, hey, yeah, we're on camera. Joe Payne getting sexy over here. It is not on. There you go. There we go. That's better. Good man, Joe. All right. Wow. World Series of Poker time, and we are live again. Putting my jacket on because it does get cold here. It gets a little chill. Look at this New York Rangers crap. Don't you have anything else? No. You, don't you have anything in orange and black? You mean you mean the. The filthy flyer colors? Yes, those <laughs> filthy flyer colors. No. Come on, not. Joe. Come on. You know, I'm, I I think you're aware of this. I made a bet with a friend of mine who's a big Philly fan, and we bet if the Rangers won, he had to take me out for a New York pizza, and I was going to take a picture with him with a Ranger hat on and vice versa. And I was sweating in game seven because I didn't mind buying him a cheesesteak, but I was not going to be real happy about having a flyer hat on, so. That's the worst. I lost a bet like that too. That I had to wear a North Carolina hat. You know, those, for a while. those those kind of bets are. Oh. You know, you know, the poker world is known for making these crazy prop bets. I bet you can't lose fifty pounds in fifty days. But those are great bets as opposed to taking somebody's money. It's just like food. You know, food related to the city. Uh, wearing having to wear a jersey or a hat from that team that you hate. <laughs> I, I have a it, slight dislike for the Flyers. Yeah. Any any public humiliation is alright. Public uh, whipping, so to speak. Yes, absolutely. Well, we, of course, are live here at the World Series of Poker at the Rio doing our thing again. Of course, uh, don't forget, we will be back on again at 630 tonight. Uh, another exciting Sunday. But boy, Joe, what a day. You know, I, w I wasn't oh. here yesterday, but the reports I was getting is that the lines were just out the door for the millionaire maker. It was just an I thought they learned scene. their lesson from last year. It wasn't. It wasn't this, as bad. Look, look, this you cannot blame anything on the World Series of Poker this year. It's the players, you know. Not, I mean, half of it was the players' fault last year, anyway, because you know, of course, last year the decision was, oh, geez, well, I don't know if I want to play this thing because I don't want to get screwed on the guarantee, right? You know, and have the prize pool all messed up. But then all of a sudden, when everybody started entering the tournament, the word got around and and they got blasted and you know weren't quite, you know, weren't quite ready to handle that many people at once. This time around, I mean, they were ready. It was just that everybody decided to show up at 3.30 to register for the second flight. Well, I mean, how, the, the you know, second flight on. was scheduled to start at 5. Right. So I guess players are thinking, okay, they, they already know the snafu that happened last year. They probably have made whatever adjustments they had to make. You get here an hour and a half. Most poker players don't show up an hour and a half before a tournament starts. They show up usually an hour into the tournament. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> getting them here an hour and a half before it's scheduled start. That's that's a pretty good feat to get some poker. You can't get poker plays out of bed till one o'clock in the afternoon anyway. What times you wake up this morning? Oh, uh, about six thirty, seven o'clock. Wow, I didn't try to. Joe, you know you know what happens when you go into the hospital for a few days. Your whole sleep uh, schedule. Is oh Jesus! I am just like waking up at every hour of the day. I'm like sticking my arm out, like oh wait, no, okay, I don't have to give any more blood. Thank you. <laughs> But, yeah, it's, it is amazing that everybody just came barreling down here at the last minute again. And the result was Jack Effel and the team had to split those entries up into waves as the to tournament moved in. forward last night. So players were getting put in at 6 o'clock, 7.30. Uh, you know, they were still picking up some alternates as they went along. Wow. But People got shut out then. They did. Wow. They did. But, actually, I spoke to Jack this morning real quick, gave him a quick congratulations on – managing what could have been another really difficult situation mm -hmm. and said to him so so jack so you know are you going to open this thing up a little bit more and get ten thousand people in this and he said i think we're gonna wow <clears throat> they could have i really believe that they could have hit ten thousand now last year if i'm correct they had this tournament later in the schedule yeah but a little it was bit so later successful on. that they pushed it up earlier i guess trying to get people to come down earlier yeah uh, i mean I mean, just a, an amazing night. And uh, let me. Uh, I'm interested as to what is their max as far as what what number can they handle 
for a starting day and doing two heats like they did yesterday. Actually, they wound up doing more than two heats because they did a an 11 a.m. start. Then that start B was at 5, and then you're telling me now they were putting players in in, in, in different ways. So I wonder what the – if we ever get Jack – I'm sure we'll be able to get Jack on sometime in the near future. We should find out, is there a number that he says, okay, we can go up to this number, but that's it. I think for yesterday they pretty much hit it. You think? But, he, yeah, but I, you know, it's hard to say the, what table capacity is right now. The, we know exactly what the count was. Seven thousand nine hundred and seventy-seven entries. Wow, twenty-three short of eight thousand players. That's second incredible. biggest poker tournament in history. The, the other one was the, the one that Jamie Gold won. Is that, that is correct? correct. Yeah. Well, you remember the number on that one? Was that eighty-one hundred? Uh, eighty-one, eighty-two. 80, yeah, yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Wow, that's but impressive. A, a unbelievable day here, and uh, the prize pool on this, Joe. Did you see the prize pool? Well, you, I would imagine uh-huh. they way made way exceeded the the million dollar guarantee, right? Yes, absolutely. What is first place? One point three million dollars oh. to the winner of the millionaire maker. So it's a millionaire point three. Yes, m- maker. You got a little tip. <laughs> got a little tip there. Uh, second place is going to get eight hundred fifteen thousand. We got six fourteen for third, four sixty five, and a six figure score. Down through 12th place. I wonder if they ever considered, because of the large turnout, making second place a mill also. I think that would have been a nice gesture. Could you have guaranteed, could you imagine if they guaranteed first and second would be a million dollars? Well, they would have. For, you make it like a 1.2, 1. 1. I mean, you mess up the marketing, I suppose, but but could you imagine? Well, if you don't guarantee, you guarantee the first place is a million, but if you get a, a turnout like you did yesterday, just barely short of 8,000. I mean, think about it. Second place is eight what? Eight, eight hundred fifteen. Yeah, so I mean, there's not one hundred eighty-five thousand we can steal from somewhere. Maybe. Seven <laughs> Eleven down on the corner. Not bad. Yeah, but wow, uh, just but a spectacular day. And of course, you know, chip counts. Uh, let's see. Well, how many players? Let me get my uh, get this moved up here real quick. Uh, one thousand four hundred sixty-six players survived yesterday, and that's pretty much what. It, what it was you know survival no no question about it 4500 in starting chips yep three times one hour of line chips. levels is that correct or did they was it shorter um, than one hour? um yeah i think it was either an hour hour and a half somewhere in that ballpark uh listed right now of course this isn't going to be a full listing of players because you know you can't just i mean i think it's something people don't understand when they see the chip counts come up that these are not full listings at this point they really don't do that until they start getting down to about the final four or five tables to really have everybody's names in Unless there. the players are reporting their stacks themselves, which yeah, they which, can which is very on helpful. my stack. Yep. And if you go on the website, a player that has a little, I guess it's a little icon next to their chip total, that's telling you that that's the player self-reporting. Yep. And most players accurately report what they have. I, I don't think you would. What, what would be the purpose of Sending in the wrong number. I don't know. Eventually, you're going to get caught. I'm sure somebody will find a reason to do it, but I know when I I I, um, I didn't last too long to be able to update my chip stack. Well, you the know, day, but no, I put down exactly what I have. So right now, a couple players listed on here. Kyle Ho has reported they've got him in 140,000 chips. So we're going to assume at the moment he's the chip leader. Uh, Andrew Seidman, uh, they had him in at 137,000. And then we just start running down names. Uh, Lane Flack, 52-7. Lane, did you say Lane Flack? I did say Lane Flack. Oh, they said Wayne Flack. I'm like, no. is it another Flack? Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> oh, my He's God. He's a good guy, though. No. Uh, let's see. Scotty Wynn is in there at oh. 34,000. And the preliminary reports from other news sources of Scotty being arrested-ish uh, uh, far false. from the f- completely false. Well, he, he could have been arrested and, and released. Doubt on it. his own recognizance, you know. I very much doubt that. What was it? What was the rumor that he was arrested? Well, for? no, I was I was standing right there too. I saw him walking down here with two uh, Las Vegas metros, but it wasn't oh. like, but it wasn't like he was, uh, you know, being escorted voluntarily. No, <laughs> no, he was walking with them. I assume there may have been some sort of theft issue or something. Oh, but that's interesting. This happened I'll, yesterday. I'll try, yeah, this happened yesterday. I was sitting there too, and a couple people ran down to Kev Math and screamed, "Oh my God!" Scotty wins getting escorted out of the Rio. Know what's going on before you report it. But I will get. I should get in touch with Scotty's wife just to, just to see what that was all about. 
So we'll, we'll check on that one. Uh, let's see. Jamie Kerstetter bag chips last day. Grind it. The thirty-three thousand Dwight Pilgrim. And she bag. didn't report to you, did she? I no. heard that you said on the radio that Jamie had a, a healthy step a stack of chips, and she wasn't giving you a personal update on that. I know. Were you a little insulted? No. No. Okay. That girl is focused. Yeah, she. She's at the table. Here. She's not worrying about me. Mark who? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Dwight Pilgrim threw. J.C. Tran threw yesterday. Doc Sands and Berto Brenz. Bernard Lee, Scott Clements, John Raisner, David O.D.B. Baker, uh, William Reynolds, Tony Dunst through Lonnie Harwood, Joe Cotta. They've got him in there twice. Oh, Joe Cotta. There you go. That's the name. It's Joseph and Joe Cotta, apparently. He split himself in half. So that's pretty impressive. Maybe he uh, got married and took his wife's name. Yeah, possibly. Amit Makija in there. Vanessa Selps is hanging around with some chips. Adam Vanessa. Levy, Blake Bond, Taylor Parr. I mean, Talk that, about getting out of the gate fast, huh? Jeez. Amazing, amazing effort that girl, by her. That girl is incredible. Two days ago. And well, there was one point where she was playing in Europe that she couldn't come here because she wasn't 21. When she went thinking, up for, oh, you're thinking Annette Oberstadt on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You tried Annette. Yeah, okay. So sorry. That's okay. We had Annette on, too. Okay. But it's okay. You know what? Some impressive female players. Yeah, so we're going to be uh, seeing a, an exciting day, too. Probably see a lot of people busting out of here. You know, I, I think the most common phrase... That will be said today, and or yesterday and today here at the World Series of Poker is, I will not be the next poker millionaire. I think we'll be hearing oh, a lot any, of that. I will you hear not a lot be of, the I next, wasn't here yesterday. Did you hear a lot of that? I, I heard a few of it yesterday already, so I'm I'm sure that that was being said quite a bit. So that's your millionaire maker update at the moment. Uh, so players just kind of getting rolling on that. Uh, taking it back through what else we have going on. Uh, let me hit the uh, hit the seven card Raz here. Uh, event number seven, the seven card Raz, and this is exciting. Any any big name players still just, left? Just there is a there's a pretty big name player hanging Somebody around. Somebody with thirteen bracelets? Yeah, maybe, and you know they're actually World Series bracelets and not yeah. trinkets. <laughs> uh, but uh, of course, we're referring to Phil Helmuth. Greg Pappas is the chip leader. Uh, they're starting to play up about two o'clock this afternoon, so about a, eh, about forty five minutes away. Uh, Pappas at three ninety one, and then Phil Helmuth in there at three fourteen, and David Bach in there too. And that's a very dangerous name for people that don't remember Phil and uh, Phil and David know each other fairly well. A little history there. A little history there. Uh, Brandon Cantu at one seventy six. Ted Forrest at one seventy one. Brock Parker at one thirty eight. Yikes! How about a top six right there? And then we have Eubin Gao at ninety thousand, and Kevin Icafano is at forty five thousand. So that is going to be your final table for the seven card Raz tournament today. What do you think? Is it uh, with Phil in a good it's, chip it's, position? This could get a little. Uh, he's real close. He's only a couple thousand off the leader, correct? Three fourteen, he has? Not much, yeah. I mean, uh, would yeah. you take Phil Homie against Greg Pappas? Heads up. I think Phil's an excellent tournament player. I don't know too much about Greg, uh, so my money would be on Phil if I had a if I had a bet. Yeah, I tell you what. As I long mean, as he doesn't have an explosion. Exactly. And, I mean, and just some great players in there too, with Bach and Cantu and Ted. Ted Forrest hanging around in there. How about that? That's a name from the past, huh? Yeah. Ted Forrest. Brock Parker in there, too. Brock, an outstanding player. So that is going to be a sensational final table they're going to be broadcasting today. I, I don't believe they're doing whole cards today, uh, but they are going to be live streaming the event. So, Now, the, any particular reason why they're not doing it on the table with the whole card cam? I have no idea. I don't know. They said they're only going to be on five or ten minutes late because they're not doing whole cards. So we shall see, but, uh, you know, Tune in to Tuck at 3 o'clock, not at 2, you know, because we've got some business going on here. So, you know, once you're, once you're done with the show, then you have our permission to go and watch Phil Homie Atari win the bracelet number 14. Okay. <laughs> but should be a great table there. Uh, table or event number 6, we'll get that update in there for you. The Nolan and Holem shootout. And there's a couple of interesting names remaining in this 12-player field. Of course We're down to 12? We are down to 12. So they're going to be playing six-handed for a little bit till they get to the nine-man final table. Here's your list. Uh, Steven Lube from Norcross, Georgia at 361. And, and of course, all these guys – actually, these guys' chip counts are going to be pretty close, obviously, because it was a shootout. Yeah, yeah. So nobody's you – know, it's 361 down to 346. But the, the to me, the incredibly intriguing name sitting uh, listed in second place right now is Josh Arie, of course. Yes. You remember him. Final table with uh, Greg Raymer, I that, believe, right? That is correct. Yeah. 
So Josh Arie is still in this thing and hunting a bracelet. Right. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I like his chances here. Uh, Douglas Foster in there. Jared Jaffe, a very talented player chasing a bracelet. Uh, Max Coleman, Sean Bus, uh, Bus, I guess that'll, we'll go with Bus. Uh, David Traeger, pretty good player. Alex Bulletin, tough guy on that one, so he'll be a, he'll be a hard out. Uh, Colin York, Dimitar Donchev from Bulgaria. And we got a foreigner there. Got a little, got one of the Europeans little, hanging little around there. John Lane and Stephen Giralis. Your last twelve remaining in how the shootout. Your, uh, how was your prediction for Germany being the second most played national anthem? How's that working out so far? Um, well, you, not, none so far. Right? We've only had a couple bracelets given okay. away so far. Give it time. All right. You like to get out. Of, you like to get out of the gate like Vanessa did. Uh, well, well nice yeah. to have one or two already, right? Yeah. Well, so the interesting part about the European guys, of course, is a lot of them wait for a couple of weeks before they come over. They usually many many of them don't come over for all seven weeks of the World Series. You know, they usually come in about three or four, you know, about three weeks in. Okay. So, you know, we won't be seeing, you know, we see a lot of American flags on these uh, on these posts right now with the leaderboard. Because the that majority will, of players are right, right. here are from these other there are, states. So there are see. a couple of them here. George Danzer's here. We saw him hit a final table already. Uh, so, yeah, but I'm, I have a feeling we'll, we'll, see a, we'll see a little German contingent. I'm interested to see if your prediction is correct. I know the Canadians will be mad at me. Canadians are going to have a strong representation also. Always do. Fantastic. So, we'll. We'll see what those guys do. Uh, event number five, the limit, do seven, triple draw, low ball. Won yesterday by Tuan Lee as he knocks off Justin Bonomo, denying Bonomo again for winning a World Series of Poker bracelet. Bonomo, Bonomo's the uh, bridesmaid quite often. Oh, it's got to be killing him it's right now. Be fr I mean, it speaks volumes about his caliber of play, but it's got to be frustrating. To, it's difficult to make a final table, but to get to heads up, you know, you're supposed to win half half the time right right at so. least i mean if, if if you're equally as skilled as your opponent that's why you poker sometimes uh, as good as you are if you if you're uh, if you're just running bad it's just not going to work she's a fickle bitch isn't she poker oh she yeah, she's you, a very you, fickle you, you bitch. believe poker is a female then huh yeah uh, yeah she has to be it breaks my heart all the time <laughs> uh but twan lee taking that down knocking off bonomo uh, held off an amazing final table there with Elia Lezer and Nick Schulman, George Dancer, and Phil Galfond to try and uh, and to get that bracelet. And that was Tuan Lee's first bracelet. And stunningly, after all that he's done in the game, that was actually his first WSOP final table, too. Wow. But Did not know that. I didn't know that either until today. I was stunned to read that. Uh, but Tuan Lee has got his bracelet, and uh, we congratulate him for taking down the limit deuce to seven triple draw low ball event number five. Uh, we want to get to event number four as well because we had a come from behind winner on that one as Kyle Cartwright managed to pull that one out. Actually, you know, Kyle was battling with Elon Schwartz for quite a while on that table, and then all of a sudden he clipped Schwartz and left Jason Pastor on the table, and then uh, Kyle pretty much took care of business from there. But Kyle Cartwright winning a bracelet, and I know he's picking that up today with bracelet ceremony Maybe we can get at 2.15, so... Joe will be attacking that ceremony probably about <laughs> 2 o'clock and saying hi to Kyle. And, uh, I'll, I'll early. try to put a rope around him get him over here. And there you go. Just tell him, tell him it's Hoke. Tell him it's the Hoke show. You've got the to Hoke do the Hoke show. show. Hey, we don't want you to be hopeless. No, don't be hopeless. Good God. But congratulations to Kyle Carter. That's a, that's a well-earned victory there, too. So Kyle Carter winning event number four yesterday, taking on that no-limit hold'em event. Um, and let's see. And, of course, we did have that. Two days ago, Pot Lemon Omaha, Brandon Shaq Harris is going to be getting his bracelet today. So we want to congratulate him as he take, took down the, the biggest Pot Lemon Omaha tournament in history. 1,128 players. So an impressive uh, job there by Brandon Shaq Harris, and he'll get to enjoy the his moment in the sun down there in the Brasilia room. So big congratulations to him as well. So hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll get to talk to those guys. Pot Lemon is um, starting to get a, uh, a strong following, but I don't think it's ever going to pass Hold'em. I think there's because Hold'em is such an easier game. I don't want to say to learn, but probably to play. Where Omaha just confuses the stuffings out of people. You know, you, you give a Hold'em player four cards, <laughs> they never fold it. <laughs> I mean, there's a there's a uh, Omaha High game at Boulder Station, which I've told you about, where it's a four A game, but it plays like a eight sixteen game where it's twenty four to go, just about. 
nine people calling the flop. Oh, sure. Every hand's a great hand to, to a lot of people. It's a, um, it's a ram and jam game. A lot of Asians, and I don't, I'm not trying to be, I don't know what the word is here, but um, they do not like if you raise them. Oh, Joe. Have you ever noticed that? Take it personally, huh? No, kind I'm of, kind, I'm of, kind of insulting them. No, I'm not insulting anybody. I just no, think I'm saying style the raise play. is insulting. It's their style of play. No, if, if, if they raise and you re-raise them, it's like you've walked into their bedroom and taken their pillow. <laughs> it's like, I dare you. Oh, my God. I'm particular about my pillow, so. Okay, fair enough. Well, well, of course, we have a uh, – those guys are going to be uh, – tech. You know, hopefully we're getting bracelet winner on here in a little while. So, of course, like I said, ceremony taking place at 2.15. And kind of been a staple of the show the last year with uh, grabbing everybody and getting bracelets and having to come down here and say hi, show off a little bit. You know, get the, get their extra moment in the sun to the world, and yep. uh, you know, so uh, so Joe will be heading down there in a little bit. That's my job. All right, That's my job, man. Oh, but what a day! Uh, but it's going to be exciting around here. I mean, I know I can't wait to see the crowd around the Helmuth table. Oh man, he does he does draw a crowd. Yeah, because we won't get to that Millie Maker winner for quite a while. But uh, but today, kicking off, we do have a couple more events starting up. We've got the one a one thousand dollar. No limit hold them buy in. I know everybody that uh, didn't hang on for the millionaire maker. You know, back here today. And a lot of them back here today to play the event number nine. No limit hold them, one thousand dollar buy in event. Uh, that'll be kicking off. Uh, it already kicked off today, actually at noon. And then we also have kind of a big one today. We have got a ten k, ten k event. If my uh, computer will switch to uh, the next event, that would be great. Thank you. It will sometime. I'm not sure what's going on there, why it's, uh, why I'm locking up, but that's all right. But we do have a, a 10K coming up. Uh, I believe that's the Omaha uh, Limit Omaha Split 8 or Better. Limit. Coming up. Yeah, Limit. So I don't think the kids will be playing that one too much. They don't like they don't like Limit. No. But do you like a bracelet? Hey, get into a small field, man. Which, could, be, um, could be worth playing. Are they projecting how many people they're going to have for that one? No, probably about 200. <laughs> no, I have no, no, idea. Be no I have no idea. I don't know how many people will get into that You'll, thing. The, 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 the age of that tournament will be on a little bit on the high side, so to speak. Uh, probably. Yeah. But those are always the fun ones for the fans, too, because you have all the great veterans of the game hopping in there and doing their thing. And, um, you know, those, I mean, those brace, the, the 10K brace, mixed game bracelet events have been a real source of excitement here at the World Series of Poker every year. And it's, it was great to see a lot of them come back and re-added to the schedule. Because I think I think one thing that helps the World Series, you know, obviously you have your events that are, you know, the main event and events like the Millionaire Maker that are going to draw the public's eye. Right. But when you have events where there are recognizable names consistently at final tables, that really helps pull people in a little bit and get a little more excited about it rather than hearing about you know eight or nine guys that you don't know who they are playing for a bracelet. So you know, I, I think great move on the World Series part to add those uh, 10K mix games in there, and we're going to see another one of those coming up later this afternoon. Good day. Should be a good one. Oh, so we're here on the Mark Hoke Show. And by the way, I'm, I'm Mark Hoke. I, I I'm Joe Payne. I didn't say that. You didn't. I never freaking introduce myself. Have you noticed that? We actually we we just come right on here and get yeah. right down to business. We don't even say who we are. Yeah. Well, Mark Coke. Yeah. Joe Payne. Joe. And those are the girls from All American Dave's. They have a tough job. For, the, for those that haven't been out here, All American Dave, of course, serves some pretty high nutrition type stuff. Mm -hmm. They have a food truck outside, and they're sending their team in to feed everybody table side. All World Series long. And those girls are running past here all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's no wonder they're all in good shape because Dave doesn't let them rest. Rat well, bastard. He's got he's to give them a break sometime. A lot of the players don't want to do other things on a dinner break than eat. So All-American Dave provides the service that they bring the food right to the table. So you're able to kind of keep yourself nourished and hydrated because um, that's, that's a, a big part of Playing long hours is, is staying hydrated and nourished, and you got to wait to the dinner break, and then you got to deal with thousands of players going to the bathroom at the same time, going to the food court or actually the poker kitchen, so to speak. So this is kind of a interesting um, alternative 
Uh, it's not really that expensive either. Yeah, good, you know. good stuff. Uh oh, Kenny Einiger. Kenny Einiger. Kenny Einiger just walked He's here into to the bust building. out nine hands He's, again. Uh, are you still alive in the Millionaire Maker? Oh, Kenny oh, Einiger. Oh wow! Day two of the Millionaire wow, Maker. Wow, let's give a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Kenny. Every Einiger. day Kenny plays, he goes deeper. Because he set the bar pretty low. Well, for yeah, it's not hard to go deeper after the first effort here the at the World Series. First he was out in like five hands. It's okay. We, we, we can have fun with it now. It wasn't so much fun at the time. You were a topic of conversation for the first show. Yeah, yeah thank you. Pretty much. It's, it's, it's on. Uh, well, you were all the news we had. <laughs> <laughs> even the, uh, the guy sitting on the couch over here even said, Kenny Heineck is out that early? And he, he, he knows Anthony Curtis, so. Yeah, he knew who you were, and he said he told me that you you played yesterday's event. Didn't know if you advanced to day two, though. He got chips. All right. There you go. Well, that's outstanding. So you still have the potential to be the newest millionaire maker. I can take that's, a look for you. That's the guy that knows you right there with the WSOP jacket. Yeah. Casino examiner just finds a way to know people. He's very sneaky. He's a he's a pretty big he's a he's, he card says he knows counter you. guy. He knows you. We'll just we'll 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 say that advantage player is that the is that should player. I say play advantage player? I apologize. Non square. Non square. So the casino looks at the players' um, recreational plays. They call them squares because it's pretty hard to get on a roll when you're a square. square. Yeah. Boom 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 boom. I did that to a couple boxes yesterday. <laughs> Don't tell Tana over there. That was a long Not oh. that they call advantage players balls, because we roll pretty good, though. That's how I roll. You bet That's you. That's Hollywood Dave say. Oh. That's how I roll. Yeah. Dave will be down here, I think, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, Dave will be here. That'll be we'll fun. We'll get him on the air. I always have a good time with Hollywood Dave. He's something he else. He's character. engaged, by the way. Can you imagine that? How did he do that? How did she do that? I... I think that when he was hanging out with the Occupy Wall Street thing that he must have <laughs> been passing around some good drugs or Actually, something. Actually, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, his, I can call her his fiance now, at the uh, Blackjack Bowl in January. Very nice, very nice lady. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell she do with Dave? San Fran she's a San Francisco <laughs> Giant fan, and Dave's a big L.A. Dodger. Yes, that's a, that's a serious yeah, conflict. That's, that's a conflict. That would be like me marrying a Devil fan or, or a Flyer fan. Or an Islander fan. You would be so lucky as to have married a Flyer fan. Yeah, I see what I you know. do to your wife, man. You make her dress up in all that Ranger stuff, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. She comes to bed with it on, you're too. One, <laughs> you're one sly dog, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> oh, man. Nothing, well, nothing gets me more aroused than a young lady with just a Ranger jersey on. Oh, Jesus. Really? You'd be happy to see a young lady with any type of jersey coming <laughs> into your bedroom, pal. Well, how young are we talking here? Hey, now? you know what? Whatever, you, whatever it takes, Joe. Whatever I do have a young takes. wife. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so met her uh, in school. Well, I, I was parked outside the school when I met her. He now he's telling you he doesn't know you. No, he He called you Joe Payne, really? Wow. He's having a tough day. He's psyched about that million. Well, he's, you know, he's sort of a good-looking guy. He knows Joe's good-looking. Wednesday, baby, Wednesday. He kind of he kind of made a mistake with uh, Bernard Lee. Who by did? The way. Casino examiner. Did he? What did he do? Uh, did he congratulate him. Was he made like a, a tennis comment. reporter? He, he congratulated made, him on winning when he didn't win. He made a comment uh, in a conversation with him along the lines of, "So how many times do you have to get lucky to to get through a large field like that? Oh. You know, probably about three times." And and Bernard said, "I never got lucky in my deep run in the World Series of Poker main event. Never." It's documented. I never was behind in, uh, behind in a hand. Never. He was never behind when he got when he, when when he finished like twelfth, twelfth or thirteenth. Wow. Day. Yeah. Well, he obviously was behind the hand he went out on. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> the, cas the casino was kind of like really. I I, I can't wow. believe that. that and I was is, like, oh. You know, th no, and th no, no. That is an accomplishment. If you can go through a large field and never get it in bad, or have to get it in on a race, so to speak. That's pretty hard to do. I'd love to see Bernard Lee become a world champion. That would yeah, be. You think just, he deserves it, right? Oh, absolutely. I'd love to see Bernard win a world title. There would be a representative for you right there. He might be impossible to deal with at that point. You better be, you better have been friends with Bernard before he won. That's all I'm going to say. Bernard's protective. Very careful. Kenny Heinegger. Kenny Heinegger. 
Who let who let all these blackjack guys in here? All, these, all these blackjack guys. We made we made the transition. I have a deck. Watch the camera. Uh oh. Thing. Okay. What Kenny Who's Iger is doing something here. I'm not sure. Kenny, you want to you want to sit here for a while? Or? Kenny Kenny Einiger. <laughs> Vanquish. He's passing Vanquish around everybody. This is the second person to empty their backpack on our <laughs> desk, by the way, <laughs> during the World Series. What, didn't you like the food here? Well, I, I I didn't think we were going on air so quickly, so I was having lunch and came. Mark says, "Okay, we're going to go on." Hey, man, Jay's in the house. Yeah, Joe. Joe's now got it. You can see that Kenny Einiger and Joe Payne are actually separate, and we don't even look like each other. Just leaving his backpack up on the. Look at this. See what it says. Did you give Mark one? What do I get? What do I get? Oh, my card. It's 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 my card. I how many do you go? How many of those do you go through in a week? This is card. It's his card. Let me let me see that. It's my, one my, it, when Kenny Anigan says, "Do you want my card?" Yeah, it's, it's my, card. my card. Hey, Kenny, take it back. I, I have a couple of your cards at home. <laughs> yeah, it's great luck. <laughs> Good luck. You should see what happened to me the first day. Kenny, what table are you on today? 350. In what room? Right here? What color? <laughs> you could just text him and find out. What's that? You could just text him. Ken, I don't know. Kenny Iger emptying a wallet over here too. This Ken, is if you want to do some money on the table, that's fine too. Yeah. Yeah, I got all the money. Oh, it's just numbers, no colors today. I I deal a blackjack handout, but I'd be afraid to see what you guys would do. It would be they'd be like Pavlov's dog, salivating every time. It's like every time the bell rings. Three fifty. Just three fifty. one. Okay. That poor that poor dealer. Yes, because the button. The button will start. Yeah, the button will start in ten or nine. All right. <laughs> Jeez. Trash talking among the players oh here. Oh my goodness! It's a it's a millionaire maker blackjack battle going on here at the World Series Poker. Look out, so, everybody! This players, is funny what as time hell. is that slot? Is that two o'clock slot? Obviously, right? Two p.m. slot. Two p.m. restart. Oh, because you would have played today's event if you got yeah. Uh, I feel like you won a thousand. I think Kenny should put. I think Kenny should put me in an event then. <laughs> right. There you go. We'll Kenny, just, Kenny's plus twenty five hundred. I am. Yeah, that that won't last long. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Well, it looks like the. As you can kind of imagine, the millionaire maker uh, looks like the break is s starting to happen out here. Seventy-nine, so. seventy-seven, I believe the exact. Went through a lot of. A lot of people to go through. What are, what are they paying down to? About eight hundred. Eight something. Eight nineteen. Yeah, we need about six hundred to go. Okay. What do you think? Six hundred with the level of the blinds are high now. Four hundred, eight hundred, maybe three hours. Three levels. That sounds about right. Uh, yeah, four. Probably close. I would think, right? Yeah. Probably by dinner break for sure. You should be getting money by dinner. Oh, actually, your dinner break's going to be later because you're starting yeah, at 2, yeah. I think it'd be before dinner break. I mean, it's 400, 800, 500, 1,000. I mean, I would think that first. And the, yeah. the average chip stack is 24? 23, 24. Okay. All right. Well, Kenny Einiger's already counting his money over I, here, I too. Be, I could be out here 203. Guys, I'm not going to be what happened. I had a set of jacks. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> wow. All right. So there we go. You know, I, right, I, the I, mayhem I, is I, over now. I see Tana Karn over. You know, we should see if Tana wants to come on the show. Who's this? The owner of Run Good Gear over there in the far chair. Okay. I don't know. See if he wants to stop in and say hi to everybody. You want to see this guy right here with the. Uh, on the far side there. White hat. In the white hat, yeah. I'll be right back. I mean, let's say hi to Tana. Of course, uh, one of the great sponsors of our show here at the World Series of Poker. And the home of the Run Good Gear Lounge, Tana. Yeah. I mean, this has been a, an, a, an amazing setup that we've got in here, and people have been. Uh... Yes, no, maybe. Oh, he's scared. He's scared. 
No. All right. I was going to give a chance to plug his wares, but I guess that's my job to do. So so make sure you guys stop by the booth. We've got some great uh, Run Good Gear stuff on display for you. And uh, Tom you know, is not interested in coming on. That's all right. He, uh, he had a tough and day. And I quote, he busted pretty bad. Oh, again? Yeah, so. Ugh. Well, he's not had a good couple See, of days. I busted pretty bad, too, but I came right on and gave you an exit interview. Yeah, you looked like somebody shot your dog, too. Yeah. That was kind of rough. All right, so uh, you know we got some players meandering around. We'll see if we can grab somebody before uh, before they head in. But yeah, this has just been uh, these great. But you know, it, it, things have toned down now. It's Sunday. You know, we're just have a little one K going on. Uh, now, of course, we'll be buzzing here in about twenty some minutes with the uh, return of another final table. And by the way, that is Phil's fiftieth final table. In the World Series of Poker. That's impressive. Do we know how 50. many do we know how many tournaments he's actually played? I doubt it. Who I, I don't Would think Phil would want to count that either. Oh God, how many could he have played over the years? What would you From say the, what would you say the, the average number he plays uh per World Series? Would you say he plays twenty five events? Yeah, twenty to twenty five events. Okay. Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Okay, so at, at uh, least so I mean he's he's a pretty greedy one too. I mean he'll play uh He'll play any chance he can get to get a bracelet. So, so he's been playing for about thirty-four years. Would you say? Yeah, that's that's a pretty fair number, I think. So he's been playing about six hundred and eighty events. And no, that would be twenty years. Six hundred and eighty. Well, yeah. So that's still a pretty darn good percentage. Yeah, I'd take it. Take getting he's the got one. He's a, a vast amount of caches too. Yeah. So, one of the best, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm old school, but. I think he's one of the best tournament players around. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. And the flip side is that he, um, his cash game, probably needs some work. So I've heard. That's what he I did hear. kind of had a little rough time on uh, some of the old TV shows, High Stakes Poker, and so on. You think Struggled Phil? A little do you bit. think Phil would would seek help to improve his cash game, or do you think that he would be like he well, wouldn't even dare to ask for help? Well, I know two years ago, um, before uh, when he's had those three third place finishes he really had taken the time to bone up on the mixed games because he wanted to have more opportunities to win bracelets and you know the way to do it was to play mixed game tournaments and he of course had never won a mixed game bracelet right. so everybody was given a fly well yeah you're, you're a hold them guy you can't do anything else special so so you know what he said you know what? i'm going to prove you guys wrong and then eventually won another mixed game bracelet and uh, you know it's been and here he is again I mean, that's it. Right there. You know, that's what the great the great players do. You even look at Daniel Negreanu a few years ago when he was struggling online and said, you know what, I really need to change something up. Something isn't correct. And he took the time, got some extra training, worked with some people, and managed to up his game as well. And that's that's one of the great things about it. Uh, Tony Dunst going by. Good. Of course, uh, voice of the raw deal in the WPT live streams. I think we can say WPT in here. You know, he, Kenny could just come on camera sometime. <laughs> Jeez. Invading the show from the back door over there. Yes. What's the number? Um, I don't have the Skype open. I probably should do that. I, I saw didn't it on even realize last it. time when I was watching. Yeah, yeah, because I'm, I'm an idiot. No, he's giving his phone number out. <laughs> I think Kenny just wants a date. That's what I think. He's got a beautiful wife. I think I have an ingrown toenail. I got taken out. <laughs> <laughs> They're not good. All right. So bracelet ceremony coming up here at two fifteen, and like I said, we'll be trying to get some of the our bracelet winners coming down to the show. Joe will be taking care of that. Um, I'll tell you what. Why don't we uh, step away for a quick break? Well, everybody's just kind of running around here. And we will come right back here with uh, more from the Mark Hoke Show live at the World Series of Poker. Sound all right, Joe? Absolutely. Okay. So let's step back, take a break, and uh, we'll come, come back. right back. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand-new Arctic Blue cooling towel. 
Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code Mark Hoke Show when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit blindsquirrelapparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Tough day at the Felt? Get off tilt and unstuck by escaping to the desert for an extreme off-road adventure with Sun Buggy Fun Rentals. We have the biggest fleet of off-road vehicles known in the universe. And since we know poker players aren't exactly early risers, we now offer after-dark tours for all you night owls. And don't forget to stop by the Mark Hope Show WSOP booth at the Rio to win a free Sun Buggy experience. Please call us 24-7 at 1-866-728-4443 and visit us at WSOP www.sunbuggy.com. Call us now and take the off-road ride of your life with Sun Buggy Fun Rentals. Sports bettors, tired of getting beat every week at your sports book? It's time to stop guessing and start winning. We all know cash is king, and it's time to let the team at Double Digit Covers come to the rescue to help you get the positive cash flow you need to live the life you've always dreamed about. Tony Dose and his all-star sports handicapping team will be in your corner to help you beat the point spread, bring excitement and winning to your betting experience, and build your bankroll to levels you never thought possible. Get free winning sports information at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Stop guessing and start winning today at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Call now for today's free winner. 1-855-489-2700. That's 1-855-489-2700. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final Nine comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? 
Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, and we are back here on The Mark Hoke Show, live from the World Series of Poker. Joe, we're live. You have your mic on? You're live, man. Look at all these guys out here. A lot of people trying to become millionaires, I think. That'll be fun. That's a, that's a tip. You know, of course, last year's billionaire maker winner, Benny Chen, was working in a restaurant, bagged it, went home, didn't quit his job. Really? At least for a while. <laughs> Do we know that, he, that, that he's still? He came back down from the main. But that yeah, was that it? was pretty much it. Wow. Yep. He played that event and, and then came back for the main and then went back to work? Yeah. That's pretty kudos, tough to do. Kudos to him. But I'll tell you what, that's that's knowing your limitations. You know, that that's one of those things where, you know, if you're not a professional player, lightning strikes. And, and you know, how many times have we seen that story in, in any type of gambling? You know, someone will get that big score, and then all of a sudden they think they're the greatest thing ever, and that money disappears like that. you have any examples yeah. for it? No, I, could, that <laughs> I could probably look around the halls and find examples of that. But people just get in there, get that money, and you know, over overextend themselves, and off you go. So, live the life of rock stars for as long as the money lasts. Yep. And then all of a sudden, oops. Oh, speaking of speaking of rock stars, Sarah Grant and Christy Arnett. Oh, can you two come over here for a minute? Do you have a minute? Thirty seconds. Let them in here real quick. And here, swing around here real fast, real fast, real fast. We can we can do an interview on here. Oh my God. You're on camera, Sarah. That was wonderful. That was perfect. That was perfect. Let me, let me, I, I, I will make room because my, my ugliness is, is not worthy of these two being on the camera. Oh, I see. Yeah, how about hey, that? Hey. I have one too. <laughs> Great. Well, we're not quite see, wired okay, in. Just for, for you guys who are watching, this is what happens when you become a poker player. You like don't oh. wash your hair, and then this is. I don't wash my hair either. <laughs> oh, don't worry. So, Mark, we're really both really dirty yeah. right now. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Oh, dirty girls. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted to say hi. Good to I see you. I appreciate it. Good Have to see you, awesome too. Have summer. Yeah, okay. you go get them, kids. Get out of here. There you go. That's worth watching the podcast right there. <laughs> Done. Sarah Grant and Christy Arnett. You know, we had Matt Stout photobomb the camera the other day sticking his face in there. We almost and, had something else, and, sticking, and Sarah, something else sticking in the camera. <laughs> she did not realize that she bent over. Yeah, in front of the camera. In front of the camera, and she had a very short uh, outfit on. Could have been very interesting. Now you got to move back over. You're, cl- oh. you're too close to me, Joe. Well, you're too close. Yeah, well, I don't mind after, Christy and Sarah get close to me, but yeah, I was just but you, after. you not so much. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Well, hey. It's okay, you know. I swear to God, Sarah comes in here every just looking beautiful. She looks good. Unbelievable. She's working for Poker News, it looks like. Yeah, yeah as, as usual. As usual. This guy always got a big stick in her hand. Do you remember who one of the, not the original, but do you remember who was a Poker News girl and, and became a poker player? And then we haven't heard from her in a while? Uh, no. I'm blanking. With the name, um, it's, she has a name that's named after a very famous store in New York. Macy's? Bloomingdale's? You need a hint? Sure, I do. Begins with a T. Uh, trap? Oh, my God. Trago? Tr- uh, no, I have no idea. Jewelry store. Oh, Tiffany's. There you go. Oh, yeah, Tiffany Michelle. Tiffany Michelle. Yeah, there you go. She was, uh, she was a Poker News on-site reporter. She was. That is very true. Then played and got... Oh, got look s- who's here. Look at this sexy guy. I'll tell you what. Greg Mueller. Doing got, his thing. Got sponsored by, uh, <laughs> she, I forget who she got sponsored by, but. Well, she just hit it big on reality TV, too. That didn't hurt. I saw Tiffany Michelle on America, uh, Worst Cooks in America. 
What was, what was the name of the show? Worst Cooks in America. Are you going to come over and say hi, Greg? You coming over to say hi, or you just br- – Yeah, let's get Greg in here. i got to say hi to Greg Mule. Greg, come on around here, buddy. Look good in that three-bet clothing, by the way. We've got to make sure we mention that. Yeah, just get around Joe's tuna sandwich. That's all right. Greg, good to see you, my friend. Always what's going a pleasure. on? Well, what's going on with you is the question, man. I'm not I'm not playing. Griggs is taking the mic out of the stand. There he goes. Well, I don't like to, you know, lean over. Well, you are kind of tall. I'm comfortable, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> By the way, how are you feeling about the uh, Stanley Cup there with the – look at this guy. Who are you cheering for? <laughs> <laughs> see my brother over there? Yeah. Off in the three bet. He's there a pilot. Go. He's not a poker player. Okay. Just here for the support, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so what's new with you? Uh, how are things going here at the World Series so far? Well, I'm probably in the top three stacks heading into day two of the Million Maker, but that means Jack Diddley because it's uh, probably about, what, 1,500 players left? Yeah, we have about 14, 46. 14, yeah, yeah, it's just a guesstimation, but there's a there's a ton of players left. So, um, you know, but it's nice to have a lot of chips. It is. It gives it myself is. a little bit of room and, you know, higher expectations. This is one, if I could take one at the World Series, this is the one I'd like to take. Really? Yeah. I mean, we're light years away, but it'd be nice. Yeah, it's a big yeah. payday. Were you amazed at how many people ended up entering? Yeah, this unbelievable. 8,000 people, like, it's ridiculous. How do people have all this money? I don't know. I think they saved up all year, you know, putting pennies in the jar. and It's crazy. But, you know, the thing is, like, it'll be a tough tournament as it goes later on. All the good players seem to navigate their way through. So tournament's just beginning to start. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a really interesting tournament when you consider, you know, how many minefields you have to get through in this yeah. thing. You know, and, and you're very fortunate. You picked up some chips early. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're going to be able to push some people around a little bit and use that experience. It's not my style. I don't, I don't like to push people around, you know. I just like to wait for big hands and, you know. <laughs> listen, listen to this guy. Yeah, Kristen Ting over here, too. Boy, everybody's hanging around all of a sudden. This is fun. Well, you know, I fun. thought I'd just stop by because I always see it. And I never have time. I'm always in a hurry. I know. But I had a few extra minutes, so I figured I'd come and say hi. Well, I appreciate it, Greg. It's good to see you. Hey, you too. Go gotta, win this gotta thing, go buddy. i inside, and I'll let you back here to uh, Captain Captain Messier from the Rangers. Yeah, I know. It's a little frustrating. I honestly think they're drawing dead. Uh, no, I don't oh, mean in a bad way. Oh, he's calling the drawing dead on I the Rangers. I think that the West is going to win. I'm, I'm being honest. Whether it's the Kings or Chicago, the West is going to win. Wow. Huh? Wow. Look at Joe. No, no. Carlos thinks the West is going to win. The Rangers are going to win. What does Coach Hughes think? <laughs> Who's going to win, Who? honestly? The West the or the Rangers? Yeah. And, uh, I think it's great value on the West. All right. Oh, there you go. Can wrinkle at you. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Look who else is over here. Lane Flack. Tell him why you couldn't make it in hockey. <laughs> <laughs> that guy can't take a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lane Flack with the bomb on Greg Mueller. Oh, my Okay, I got to run. Thanks, Greg, Marcus. Good, good to see you, my friend. Good luck. Hopefully we'll see in Greg Mueller uh, maybe oh, taking down that $1.3 million. Very nice. And, of course, Greg, 3-Bet Pro. And, uh, you know, we work with 3-Bet in the past, so we certainly have a good relationship with those guys. So not afraid to put a 3-Bet jersey in the in the booth every once in a while. Joe, you got called out by the former pro. Why is he a former pro? Well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe he can't take it. Maybe he's he lack is the right. <laughs> he, he likes the West. I do too. Actually. I don't like yeah. the West lane 160. That's for sure. You're going to give me the Rangers plus 140. I don't think the line's going to be that big. I think the, it doesn't matter who comes out. I believe the I, the Rangers will be a small underdog. Yeah, I would agree with that. Hey, by the way, we had some uh, interaction in the chat box. I kind of had that covered up. I apologize. Uh, so let's uh, let's see what we've got in here. Uh, I am Greek. Opa! What happened? Opa! Oh, is somebody saying Opa? Opa! Opa. Thank you. Got to, you got to do that. I'm sorry. I, you didn't cue me up in time. Yeah, sorry about it. I tried. I kind of did his, the, his Scotty, you know. I guess he's not under arrest. Yeah, uh, yeah I somehow doubted that. Scotty Wynn going by. Good to see him. Hey, Lauren Billings as well. Titty chips on. We can say it here. Titty chips on Twitter. Wow, she looks. She never dressed that well when she came in. No. Okay, no problem. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so Lauren Billings going by there. Uh, let's see. We've got um, Brick Mason saying, "Go Spurs, go." So already getting some NBA fights going on there. 
Uh, also asking where Raymond Davis. Last I heard, he woke up at the El Cortez, apparently, according to his Facebook. So uh, I can think of a whole bunch of places I'd rather wake up than the El Cortez. <laughs> he did say he hit rock bottom. Yeah, uh, that's, not, that's pretty much. Not, well, maybe the gold spike. Actually, they fixed the gold spike up, so it's not that bad anymore. Okay. El Cortez is... I, I cannot personally speak to the quality of the El Cortez. I've never been there, so so we'll leave that open in case they're interested in sponsoring the you show. You keep at some this point. chat box open. Yeah, well, I had it open, but I covered it because I was moving stuff around. People are yelling uh, out to you, and you don't even know. I it. know. Uh, let's see. Uh, did Raymond Davis ever get changed to the script club? I don't know, but when we have him on the show, we will be glad to ask. That's from Flipper Fair. Uh, you, let's you see what else we got. Maybe a millionaire, new millionaire, Annie Lapage. Yes. And he's still doing well in the tournament. Uh, let's see. Uh, Wookie Way said he just trolled Sean Deeb. That's pretty funny. Uh, what else do we have in there? Yeah, so, yeah, that's uh, generally the major comments in there. But, yeah, so good to see everybody here <coughs> checking out the show this afternoon. Appreciate it. Good to catch you. So uh, bracelet ceremony coming up in just a little bit, so hopefully we'll try and grab one of the uh, – one or two of the bracelet winners before. Uh, you may want to open up Skype in case somebody wants to call in. To I probably should open Skype bracelet up winner. at some point. I could have done that during the break. Could have. I could have, but I failed. I failed miserably, Joe. It's been fun in here with the computer systems. The Internet the internet has been, uh, oh, Maria Ho will go and buy there, of course, uh, commentator for the Heartland Poker Tour. Yeah, everybody's just blasting around in here right now. Let me get you back to their seats. Man, how about Sarah Grant and Christy Arnett? And that was just perfect. 30 seconds is all you need. That's all you need? <laughs> oh, God. Her boyfriend is a very large MMA fighter, by the way. Fortunately, Sarah knows me well. But he doesn't. No, well. That, that's not good for you. No, you know. If he sees you. Uh, oh, if he sees me and be like, you know. Any, yeah. any thought that he, I could possibly, as a married man, could possibly be hitting on Sarah Grant, like, for real. Yeah, that would go out the window. So when you hit on when you hit on girls, it's it's for fake. Well, generally, you know, they'll know. Okay, they'll know. Awful noisy yeah, in here sorry. today. Yeah, it is. Um, well, well, this place got trashed last night. We had a little we had a little, up? little garbage in the run good gear booth last night. We had to. Oh, clean did you up. really? Had a little garbage on the desk here too. Had to take care of. Got to get this uh, get this banner straightened out too. That's uh, that's our big project then, Joe. We'll take care of that. Uh, let's see. What do we have? Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody enjoyed the Sarah Grant visit, apparently, in the chat box as well. <laughs> you just never know what's going to happen on this show. You know, we'll get we'll get a half hour of, you know, just pure babbling and talking about what's going on here, and then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose. Just unbelievable. You had anything to do with Greg, you think, coming on? All well, hell breaks loose? That didn't hurt. Lane Flack calling him out. Calling him out. That's why he didn't make it in the Rocky movie. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with Greg. Would you mess with Greg Miller? He's a pretty big boy. Man, he'll, he'll put you in the Plus, the shave in the head gives you an additional intimidation factor. I think it does, too. Because oh. nothing to grab. I mean, if you, you know, like, a lot of the flyers, when they fight, like Dave Schultz, they like to grab the hair, you know, because they're dirty Sh fighters. Sure. Sure. Well, what that, do you? That's a flyer mentality. Uh, you know what? If I'm in a fight, I'm I'm winning. I don't care how I win. I just want to win. You Can't pull somebody's hair. Yes, you can. That's so chickish. That's you a girl what? fight. Pulling hairs. Uh, girls pull hair in fights, not guys. Are Are you saying that Dave Schultz was not a good fighter? Are you, Are you serious? He was a goon. He was a He was a goon. Couldn't play. Well, how many goals did he score in his? Who cares? Time. Exactly. Who cares? Exactly. There were guys that couldn't score goals for days after they played the Flyers, so that's fine with me. So that's how you. So you're okay with beating a, just pulverizing a team yes. and beating them that way. Yes. Hey, uh, got it. Got cups. That's not what the sports about. It got cups, man. It so got it cups. Unfortunately, we haven't had any sense. You know, so maybe we ought to get back to that. Oh, really? You want bench oh, clearing brawls? That yes. You, They're fun. If you wanna, if you wanna see a fight, go to a boxing match. Go to an MMA fight. You know, a hockey game. Come on, man. Don't you want to see this? Skill? I went to, I went to I a mean, fight. I and the hockey game broke out. You know. Yeah. All right. So you want to see the skill of skating and passing and goaltending? Well, then again, you wouldn't know anything about well, every, goaltending. Every, You're a Flyer fan. That is true. 
You, you're not getting <laughs> denial out of me. On you're not going to argue me on that one. No, nope, I'm not going to argue with that. I haven't seen it. <laughs> we got a good going now, but I haven't really seen one too nice since Hextall. So. And Hextall was running. a thug, too. Well, yeah. Remember when he chased Chelios in the corner when he played Montreal? Loved he, it. Oh, you loved it. Loved it. Yeah. Come on. We're, we're, we How about when this year when Steve breed. Mason beat up the Washington Capitol goaltender? You loved it, right, didn't you? Sure. Yeah. Not Steve Mason. I'm sorry. R Ray Emery. You know, Ray Emery. he said something mean. What happened? What did I say? I, no, him. The, oh. Uh, you know. He said something to us? No, the Capitol goalie. Oh, the Capitol goalie. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You know, got to keep your mouth shut. You're a goalie. Shh. You're there to do one thing, stop pucks, not start pucks. Ray Emery skated the 200 feet to get to the Capitol goaltender. Okay. <laughs> it's so awesome. I'm sure. It's so awesome. I'm sure the Capitol goaltender said nothing. Dan O'Brien smiling, always happy. And Look at that guy. he did say something, I don't think Ray Emery heard him 200 feet away. So It must have been pretty bad if he did hear it from 200 feet away. What no. is everybody doing here? You know, the tournament's this is, that this way, is but not they're running smart. this way. We, uh, honestly, That's what you know. To God, this is what's you know, happening you see right somebody now. Somebody running now. You know what that means? Is it? There's a tell here. Tell me what the tell is. If they're running, because it's about to start. But what's the tell? Uh, the, the tell is they're short stacked. <laughs> <laughs> there you they're go. Short stacked. There you go. Very good point. <laughs> Every chip is important right now. That's yeah. That's going to make them right back into the big blind. You know. That's you know, if they're in C two, they're going to be right back into the big blind. Right, the button's going to slot yeah. at 10, right? That's pretty... Uh, yeah, if they're running now, they're short stack. If they're taking a walk in the park, I still love the short stack guy going. If they're taking yeah, a walk yeah, in the park, yeah, yeah, plenty yeah. of chips. Plenty he almost had a stack, sh uh, stack short show He's in nice there. That, that kind of walking briskly, medium size stack, short stack, running short. What did these guys short do? short stacks running. This is a very, lot of short stacks. This is very odd, all these people sprinting down yeah, the hall. Well, not really. you, this, can't, this guy, you can't do that corner sprint. Me, I'm going to call medium it. Stack, medium stack. Well, you'll, you'll How's your stack? Ryan. What's that? 20 C, medium stack. That's He's Ryan, not running. That's Ryan LaPlan, of course, yeah. potential. Hey, what's up? See, so you can tell by the, the I, pace that they're walking with their chip just, stacks. Justin on. Oliver, the greatest <laughs> Canadian ever right there. Moving to Las Vegas, by the way. I'm excited. I'm going to get to hang out with Justin now. Got his phone number. We're gonna we're gonna pal around a little bit. Justin Oliver, one of the most thankful. Oh, there's Andy. Andy Block, Block. must must be a short stock. Andy, you're running. Good luck, buddy. I don't know about that. This is we're crazy. conducting interviews now. Yeah, this is this is pretty crazy. How everybody's we should just put like here. a question and answer information. This has been my hell for two years doing this show. Uh, so yesterday I was watching the show. While you're doing an interview, somebody's asking you where the bathroom is. Yeah. That's crazy as that. Yeah. Does it say? I forgot I forgot the rule. Ask me? I forgot my rule that when somebody asks me where the bathroom is. You send them in the I have direction? To, no, that I have to bring them on camera to make them ask me the question. It's fun. Okay. Yeah, I need to start doing that again. Yeah, this is a, quite the scene that uh, we're getting everybody moved around here for the Millionaire yeah. Maker. The clock has started. But pretty exciting stuff here. So that guy looks awfully familiar. I don't know who he is, and uh, that's going to bother me. Just nice like nice arm candy, by the way. Next to the guy. All Tell right. the truth. That's all right. Matt Glantz. Matt Glantz, looking good. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, Matt's got, some, uh, got a few chips in this thing. See the guys walking but slow? This is, uh, Plenty of chips. Medi that's a medium stack walk right there. No, nah, that's uh, that's Jason Mann. He does, he's he's he, pretty calm and casual. He had a deep run in the main event last year of the World Series. Very nice guy, by the way. Yeah, these, this is... Um, but that sprint, that was dangerous, man. You can't sprint around a corner here at the World Series of Poker. I'm, you got to call the etiquette on that right now. You cannot sprint around the corner at the WSOP. Why not? Uh, that That's asking for trouble. Because if you'll note, you see everybody's walking close to the wall over here on the opposite side. So they you, come you flying around the corner? Yeah, you can't you can't do that flying around the corner thing. Because that'll, that'll fuck up your stack in a hurry. Pardon my French. Whoa. Yeah, I dropped. Hey, Jace, how you doing? How you doing? Good. All right. 
All right. So, Joe, I probably should send you down to uh, check out the bracelet ceremony. 2.15, right? Yeah, it starts we at 2.15. Well, you might want to catch them before they go on stage. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So are you, are you dismissing me? I'm slightly dismissing Okay. You. I'll be back. Yeah, just who do you Who do you prefer I get? Both. If I can only get one, which one you want? Oh, I, I'm good either way. Okay. I shall be back. All right. So Joe's going to come down and say hi to our bracelet winners, and then uh, he'll be back. And I think Greg left his glasses. Oh, well, we'll protect those. Wow. Jamie Kerstetter, William Reynolds getting moved around here. This is a, this is quite the scene out here. I, you know, I, I don't remember this happening before uh, where all these players are getting shuffled. They must be moving some people around and, and making some serious table changes here at this point. But these guys are uh, it's a pretty chaotic scene out here in the hallway. Hey, I mean, how you doing? Good. It was really hard to pull these guys in because they are trying to get seated and get started. So I don't want to interrupt their uh, interrupt their time and their mojo trying to get into the Millionaire Maker Tournament here. But wow. Yeah, I haven't seen anything like this in a while. So uh, there's Mike Del Vecchio. I wonder what Mike Del Vecchio is doing. Mike Del Vecchio, what you doing? Come here and say, come here and say hi real quick. You look like you've got a minute. It's a very casual stroll on your part. Is, it, is this thing on? It is. It is, is this on. Thing on. It is on. What's going on, guys? Mike Delvecchio joining us here on the Mark Hoke Show. And uh, Mike, how's the World Series? Uh, so far, nothing. But uh, this tournament's going well. Yeah. Like what do we got? Seventy-five hundred. Um, excited. I want to just get like a deep run going. You will. You got it. Oh, I know there'll, so, be, there'll be plenty of deep runs. I just want to make them start happening as soon as possible. So what's going on out here in the hallways? We're seeing a lot of people scrambling and running around. Are they moving some tournaments around? What's what's happening? Uh, I think they might have gotten a lot less than they thought they were going to get for this tournament. Oh. Maybe not a lot less. I don't know. I guess maybe they thought just like residual from the millionaire maker would like run off into this. Because um, it seemed like they were just like breaking a ton of tables, just like even early. Like five minutes in, they just like... We got a guy to one of our tables from a broken table. You know, I think they've just been breaking a bunch out of like pavilion and stuff like that. All right, doing it. Making the merchandise money. Yeah, get a, get a little extra on there. Thank you. Do I get a cut for that? No, no. Uh, I could it, that that could have been on you though. All right, but yeah. So sorry, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I don't have any in the booth. Also in the booth right now. I, but I tell you what, this millionaire maker though, what a what an amazing tournament. Yeah, you know, I know you're. I know you got knocked out. I'm pretty sad but, that I'm not still in the Millionaire Maker. But but how stunned are you? Seventy over seventy nine hundred people in this. Yeah, tournament. that's really crazy. I think it's like the second biggest in WSOP history. It right? is. Yep. I was hoping they'd beat that main event numbers because that'd be pretty cool. That was. Yeah. It's a little. It's a little sad that like a fifteen hundred dollar buy in tournament can't get more players than a ten k buy in tournament. I know. Yeah, I don't know if it was just and, and you. And I you know why they the scheduled period. that? Well, yeah, you know why they, you know, they scheduled that too. With, you know, it should have been your, hey, you bust out the millionaire maker, hang around, play the one k. Yeah, I mean, that was great scheduling on their yeah. part. But, yeah, I did, I did notice that the lines for, you know, I didn't see any lines for this one k at all today. So, yeah, I don't know. I just registered really early, so I can't really talk about the lines. I just sort of rolled out of bed and was like, oh god, I didn't <laughs> sleep at all last night. <laughs> I got to get down to the Rio. So what else? Uh, what, how many tournaments are you going to be playing? I know you pretty, usually carry a pretty heavy schedule. Uh, I probably do about the same as last year. I'll play most of the 1500s and 1Ks, a few of the 2500s, a few of the 3Ks, and obviously the main event. Just can't pass that one up. Um, yeah, that's for the foreseeable future for me. So how's life uh, hanging out with Jesse Sylvia and the boys, by the way? It's, Jesse got the new house. It's and good. I actually... Um, you know, I've been living with him since like October, but I actually I just decided I needed to move after the series oh, yeah. because, you know, he's he he's a really cool guy and I I love him and everybody. But that's the problem is like they don't play too much poker anymore. They just sort of sit around the house all the time and just like hang out. And so like I love to hang out. So they're always just downstairs and I just hang out with them and we just hang out all the time and I never play any poker. Wow. See, well, see, Jesse with that big cash, you know, he's been able, he can ride that for a while. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's got the TV series and everything, too, and so, so the money's coming in. I can't just sit around, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, how about, I know you, you got a 
you know, a couple cameos on that little MTV show yeah. there. What, tell us a little bit about that and what that whole thing was like. It was really weird. Uh, it's just like people are just like filming you and then you'll have like a real interaction and then they'll be like, hey, like that was good. We want that and thing, but like could you do it like 16 more times and change the way you said this? And so then like by the time it actually gets onto the air, it's just me really forcing or just anybody just really forcing, so Jesse, are you worried about going broke anytime soon? You know, like, yeah. uh, it, was, it was a little frustrating just having to say the same line like 14 times. I'm not a very good actor, apparently. I can't force <laughs> it. Like the first time it's natural. The second time it's like, okay, like I could do that again. The third time it's like, all right, I guess I could do that again. And by the, like, the sixth time, I'm like, ugh, just like squeaking this line out with no energy whatsoever. I'm sorry. It happens. Yeah, but it's all right. Hey, you're getting on TV. Yeah. I had a famous line, apparently. Oh, did you? What? What? It, what <laughs> let's hear it. It was, quote, unquote, YouTube me, bro. <laughs> YouTube me, bro. Yeah. Did you run out and trademark it? <laughs> I did not. You did not. See, I did not. Failure you know, on your part. Somebody could just grab that right now. YouTube me, bro. That, that does sound like a T-shirt. Yeah. You still got a chance, Mike. You know, you can hop on your computer during the tournament. and. I, have, I can pull out my smartphone. Yeah. I wonder, uh, patents.com, trademark. Trademark YouTube me, bro. Le Legal Zoom probably take care of that for you pretty quick. That's a good. Are they an affiliate? No, unfortunately. Oh, I, no, thought we, I, I thought we were getting a piece. I, 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 was, no, I, I wish we, I wish we were getting a piece, but I'll I'll let the I'll let Shapiro know. The good know folks that. at Legal Zoom <laughs> for legal fees cheap. Go to LegalZoom.com. Oh, there you go. Oh Tell them Mike God. D sent you. Get five percent off. Wow. And a T-shirt. And here's here was your uh, cohort on one of our episodes on KLAV twelve thirty a.m. Jesse Caps. In the, in the house, too. I guess. Jesse Capps hanging out. I hope. Uh, uh, yeah, I got like 7,500. How you doing? Okay, so we're in, so that's good. Yeah, we're in. All right. Yeah, I'm seeing the craziness of all the people in the room here making sure it's a lot of people starting out. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even dared to enter that room. Like, it's like, is there any point to even charge text all my friends? Yeah, just give it up. I've got a few sweats in it still, so that's nice. Well, I like a few people I have 5% of, Jesse and Russell. I have 5% of each, and uh, I've got like 2% of one of my other friends. So, they're still in, huh? Yeah, there's still so, a chance that I could get like, what's first in this? Did they announce it? 1.3-ish. 1 1.3. 1 I thought it would be a little yeah. bigger. <laughs> no, well, listen to you whine. Well, I'm, I they, hope just got I would, like, they got like an extra 1,800 people. I thought it yeah, first would be like. Bigger, I can pull that prize pool for you. I'm not disappointed in it. I'm just saying, you know, like five percent of that, what, 65k? Boom, ship it. 1.31 million dollars, 1 million three hundred nineteen thousand five hundred eighty-seven. Good luck, Good luck Jesse. See you later. So 66k if if one of my horses takes it down, the five percent or something. You know, how important is that to swap? I mean, I know some players hate to do it, but in, in terms of you know sustaining a bankroll in your career, I mean, you know, if you get on and, and do the right swaps. I mean, you know, it could be pretty lucrative for you. Yeah, it could be. For me, I almost never cash, so my swaps never get any money, and none of my swaps ever cash, so I don't get any money. <laughs> so it seems pretty <laughs> insignificant. It's just like, okay, like, we'll trade this percentage, and then neither of us will cash, and then we'll just both still be broke, you know, from the tournament. We'll still just, like, leave with nothing. That's what normally happens. But I did have that 3% of Ben Hamnett. That was the one sweat that's ever come through for me. That's, that was a good sweat, too. Yeah, it was. When the I, of course, missed Jesse and Russell. <sighs> <laughs> the year before that, I had 3% of both of them. And then that year, I had none. Well, that was not, uh, not was, smart on your part. It was part. not a good decision on my part. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but you know what? Hey, you get another shot at, you get another shot anyway. at the, that $10 million coming up. Yeah. But I would so, like to be a ten millionaire. That would be good. I mean, do you, I mean, well, you know, let me get your opinion about that. As um, you know, a younger player, when you see that they guarantee the main event for ten million dollars, and we all know, you know, you're playing for the world championship. There's a lot of money on the line anyway. But now they made that uh, made that main event a guaranteed ten million dollars. Do you think that that is going to draw people, more people, in to play the main event to see that ten million dollars out there, or does it really make a difference? I mean. It, I mean, were you see, just going to play I, the main event anyway? And I don't, I don't really know. You know, like, I'm not a marketing major. I feel like the World Series of Poker has some, like, pretty smart people that work for them that would just be like, okay, like, yeah, like, they could draw up some reasons why it's a good idea and they would do it. They wouldn't just, like, arbitrarily say, okay, like, we'll advertise $10 million for no reason. 
you know? So I would I'd like to think, I have faith in the World Series poker staff, that they, are, uh, they made an informed decision and decided to go for this. Because otherwise, if it gets the same amount of people and then it's just extra top-heavy, like, it doesn't really matter. I guess I'd prefer it to be top-heavy because I'm the type of player who goes after the top three. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it would reward me more for my style. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm no, excited. No doubt. Wait, do you have to get back in there or are you on break? Yeah, or? I'm oh. on break. I don't really oh, okay. know when the break is over, though. Okay. Well, I probably I don't want to hold you up too long there, but. I appreciate you stopping in here. Yeah, it's fun. I love to just jump on the radio, and I get to hear myself talk for, like, five, ten minutes. You know? Yeah. What's better than that? Absolutely. Well, I could probably make a list, but, you know, but I do <laughs> appreciate it. I do All appreciate right, well, it. Mike, good to see you. Yeah. Good luck in the 1K Hopefully there. next break I'll have uh, a bit more. There you go. Mike Delvecchio, everybody. See you guys later. All right, one of the great young guns in poker, and uh, looking forward to seeing if Mike can maybe bring home that 1K championship. That would be fun to see you. All right, so we are right now, like I said, there's a lot of chaos in the hallways. you got the brakes on that, and the, the Millionaire Maker guys are getting all moved around. It is, um, it's pretty nuts in here. It's pretty nuts. Uh, let's see, uh, questions in the chat box. Uh, let's see, uh, Brick Mesa asking any dog show combo attorneys going on today. No, I, I, I do believe that uh, that that shark, that, that was a jumping of the shark on that one. I don't think the guy's... Uh, I don't think we'll see that one again anytime soon. Of course, for you missed it yesterday, there was a dog show, uh, a couple of dog shows going on, you know, frisbee throwing and stuff like that, inside the rooms here. Caused a little chaos and a little bit of delays. Of course, I'm Mark Hoke. We're very happy to uh, be on the air live here at the World Series of Poker main event, or main event, that's coming later, uh, main series of poker here at the Rio. Uh, Joe Payne is down to trying to get us a couple of bracelet winners in the house of course you know just part of the fun here is just we never know who's going to show up and got uh, lane flack calling out greg mueller that had to hurt had to hurt a lot but uh, excuse me let me take a sip here uh, we've been having a great show and you know it's been incredibly exciting all the way through so far and if you want to go on youtube check out the videos that we have and we'll try and get some of those sound recordings done as soon as possible it has been incredibly chaotic uh, for the team here is we've been trying to get settled in, making adjustments to our booth and trying to do all sorts of things as we've moved forward here at the WSOP. So things are finally calming down. We're doing okay, having a good time, and uh, everybody here at the World Series having a blast. Nothing goofy happening, just uh, some great poker and uh, history being made as well with the Millionaire Maker again. <coughs> so... Uh, Man, it's just uh, been an exciting time. So we're hanging in. Uh, hopefully uh, Joe Payne will uh, get us a bracelet winner or two down here in just a little bit. So i tell you what, uh, we're going to step back. We'll take another break, and uh, we'll have more from live from the World Series of Poker here at the Rio right after this. Stick around, everybody. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at ArcticBLU.com and pick yours up today. 
Plus, enter the discount code Mark Hoke Show when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. I'm Dutch Boyd, two-time WSOP bracelet winner, and I want to share my story with you. Twelve years as a pro has taught me a lot. For the last year, I've boiled it all down into a tell-all book, 90,000 words. In Poker Tilt, I take you on my journey through all the ups and downs that poker has to offer, all the manic highs and hellish lows of every bad beat and lucky draw. So go to www.pokertilt.com to read more, or just go buy the new book on Amazon or Kindle. Right now, pokertilt.com. I guarantee you'll enjoy the ride. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? Tough day at the Felt? Get off tilt and unstuck by escaping to the desert for an extreme off-road adventure with Sun Buggy Fun Rentals. We have the biggest fleet of off-road vehicles known in the universe. And since we know poker players aren't exactly early risers, we now offer after-dark tours for all you night owls. And don't forget to stop by the Mark Hope Show WSOP booth at the Rio to win a free Sun Buggy experience. Please call us 24-7 at 1-866-728-4443 and visit us at WSOP www.sunbuggy.com Call us now and take the off-road ride of your life with Sun Buggy Fun Rentals. RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with a promo code HOKE. That's H-O-K-E for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And we are back live here at the World Series of Poker 2014 edition. Yeah, it's kind of getting to be a tradition to see us down here, too. We're having a great time here at the WSOP. All sorts of guests stopping by the booth and having an amazing time. And, uh, once again, if you want to check out the shows on video, uh, we've got them up on YouTube. As soon as we can get them up there, we get them done. So check it out. Just punch in Mark Hope. You'll find us right there. I'm not the first guy on the list at the moment, just uh, just so you know. I'm one down. But we always have a lot of fun out here. And, of course, hey, if you want to follow the show you know, year-round, give me one second. I should have grabbed this card a little bit. I know, I don't have a producer here. Uh, but don't forget uh, that we, of course, are on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. on KLAV 1230 AM and KLAV 1230 AM.com. 
course, the Talk of Las Vegas. We have a blast on that show every week, you know, giving you the read and the snap call and all the great guests that we bring in studio. So make sure you check us out on there. Uh, also, replays on Friday night at 9 o'clock p.m. Pacific time as well. Uh, on, also, coming soon, we'll be on Sports 920, the game. Friday nights, we're right now scheduled to be on at 5 o'clock Pacific time. Are you kidding me? They're going to be driving home and listening to the Mark Hoke Show, and we certainly do appreciate it. Uh, opportunity to be on 920 the game so make sure you join us there as well facebook hey we love to get some likes on facebook if you haven't liked us on facebook well gosh darn it we'd certainly appreciate if you do that for us make sure you go to the mark hoke show on facebook and it is mark hoke show on twitter as well so uh you know, join in the fun we'd certainly like to have you get on board there uh we are joe's down right now trying to get us an interview with at least one of our bracelet winners that's receiving their hardware today. So as soon as Joe comes back up, we'll uh, hopefully get to see some boys holding some hardware like we did last year. Always exciting to get to talk to these guys about their great moments in this World Series of Poker. Uh, and, and, of course, don't forget, the Players Poker Championship Poker Tour has got an awesome event coming up here in Las Vegas. Hey, if you burn out a little bit and you need to get into a great event, and I guarantee you you're going to be thrilled to do it, uh, head on over to the Golden Nugget, uh, June 29th through July 1st. You're going to have a great time, I promise you. And uh, you know what? I, I don't think I played the ad, so I'll tell you what. Let me, I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about what's happened with the PPC. It's time to get on board with the Players Poker Championship Poker Tour. The PPC caters to the amateur player as well as up-and-coming and touring pros with affordable buy-ins and outstanding structures. The fastest-growing poker tour in the United States invades Las Vegas with three tournaments, June 29th through July 1st at the Golden Nugget, and Tampa Bay Downs July 10th through the 20th for the North American Championship with $300,000 in guarantees. Win your way to the PPC World Championship in Aruba, featuring the $200,000 guaranteed main event, hosted by PPC Ambassador Joe Sirach. For all the details, visit us at ppcpokertour.com. Join in the excitement in Las Vegas and across the U.S. with the Players Poker Championship Poker Tour. All right, so there you go. Make sure to check it out at ppcpokertour.com. Dot com and we have a lot of great discounts for all you guys out there too i mean I, i'll tell you what i don't know we can do much better than this for you if you want to do some shopping for the poker fan of the family or you know for anybody for that matter here's what we got uh arctic blue cooling towels man it is not cool to be hot it is starting to get a little toasty out here in las vegas you can pick up an arctic blue cooling towel at arcticblu.com put in the code mark hoax show you're going to get 15 percent off plus free shipping great deal there Run Good Gear code is Hoke for 10% off, so make sure you head on over to RunGoodGear.com and stop by the Run Good Gear Lounge. Love to have you be a part of that. Blind Squirrel Apparel, we got 20% off with the code Hoke. Uh, make sure you go to Blind Squirrel Apparel, look good, and be lucky. Blind Squirrel Apparel. Uh, we also have our good friends at Double Digit Covers. Hey, I'll tell you what, Tony Dose, if you haven't checked out DoubleDigitCovers.com, you are looking at one of the top handicapping teams in the game today, or in sports today. Check it out. Go to DoubleDigitCovers.com. You can sign up for a free winner or give them a call at 855-489-2700. Uh, all Till Poker Tables, we've got a $300 discount. If you mentioned uh, that you heard us on the Mark Oak Show, uh, give them a Brian not a call at 262-490-3812. Team Poker Joker, everybody's loving the hats. We've got 10% off of the code Vegas Hoke. So that's a pretty good score as well. And, of course, we have our other great sponsors. Good friends, BlueRail.net. The best in website design, you can give Bob a call at 522-820-5128. It's 522-280-5128. When you build websites, how far do you want to go? Blue Rail. Poker Tilt, check out Dutch Boyd's new book. I'm telling you guys, you are going to love it. It is an incredible read. Go to PokerTilt.com and buy that book right now. That would make me very, very happy. And make Dutch happy, too. Uh, and, of course, we do have, don't forget, we have our 1K satellite drawing. That's right, you can win a 1K satellite main event seat by all you have to do is if you're here at the rio just fill out the form we got on the table or if you hop on markhoakshow.com and click on the link at the top of the page you can uh, have a chance to win a 1k main event satellite seat that means you're gonna have a one in ten shot of going to the main event you know it's not often you get a chance like that so hop on in there and get into the contest just fill out the form 
and uh, we will get it right here. They've been coming in hot and heavy. And, of course, we're also giving away some other prizes, like great you know, T-shirts from the Mark Hoke Show. And we also have weekly prizes from Sun Buggy Fun Rentals uh, all over the de 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 desert southwest. But we've got these great uh, Sun Buggy, Dune Buggy tours going on in Las Vegas. So check it out, Sun Buggy Fun Rentals. All right. So that should about, uh, about cover it. That's the hallways getting a little bit quiet here as we are getting uh, things back underway as the players playing the Millionaire Maker, trying to continue to advance their cause to win $1.3 million. That's right. In case you missed it, sweet mother of God, are they giving away some money in here. We have got a prize pool of $10,768,000. $950. That's going to buy you a lot of Kraft macaroni and cheese. Uh, 7,977 entrants. Uh, we were at start the day at 1,466 players remaining. Winner walks out with $1,319,587. Of course, Benny Chen was the man that did it last year, and we will see if uh, who's going to bring it home this year. Justin Oliver looking confused. Happy but confused. Very confused. <laughs> Are you here? Tell tell everybody. Maybe we can get somebody. Maybe we can get somebody on the uh, on the Rio staff to to help out. Of course, uh, Justin Oliver winning a bracelet last year here at the World Series of Poker, and uh, make sure Mike's on there. And we're very happy to see you again, sir. What's up? It's great to see you, Mark. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very well. So. You enjoying this whole thing, huh? I love it here. The Rio is amazing. The World Series is amazing. I'm glad to be back again, just trying to go bracelet hunting like everybody else. It's been an amazing day with this millionaire maker. What, you know, when you started seeing some of these numbers coming in, what were you thinking? You know what? It wasn't even the numbers. I wasn't paying attention to the screen. It was the room and the ambiance and and the hallways and the parking and you know like <laughs> my my friend was coming he couldn't find a parking spot oh my god so there's nowhere to park it was just insane and you know as i'm looking around and seeing so many people and i knew it was going to be like that because all of my friends all of my family anyone i knew who played poker was going to play that event like people that just don't play poker tournaments said to me I'm playing the millionaire maker so i knew it was going to be a huge turnout so i wasn't surprised but it was just crazy to see it in action and see that many people and see poker alive and well yeah so uh, I, I hate to are you still in or uh i'm not i'm not in the millionaire Sorry. maker i i contributed two bullets okay. and uh uh what, what's the first place prize i didn't see one million three hundred nineteen thousand wow seven bucks yeah i thought it was going to be even more than that with the turnout they got what's second Eight hundred fifteen thousand. So that's crazy. It would have been amazing if they could have made two millionaires. They got close. They were close. So they wanted to shut people out. It might have happened. So. Yeah, I mean, it was nuts. How many flights? What, what was the latest flight last night? Uh, I know they were doing waves through nine o'clock. I think so. That yeah. is just sick. I mean, I started at six for my for my second flight, and I know my brother started at eight. So that's amazing. I mean, I guess if they didn't shut it down, they could have smashed the record of of uh, eighty six hundred or whatever it is. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so what are you playing today? What's going on? Uh, I played now? the 1K, contributed to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm looking, walking around, looking a little confused right now. But I'm going to go find my friend Josh Aria, who's final tabling the uh, shootout. Yeah. So I'm going to go root for him, and he's a great guy. So I'd love to see him win his third bracelet. I love Josh. Josh is one of the guys I think that really gets in in poker. Understands we got to keep things fun and exciting in the game, and. Now he's he's a fantastic ambassador for for the game for sure. He is. He's a really genuine guy and a great player and uh, uh, fun to watch. And I'd love to see him get that third bracelet. So now you won a bracelet last year. You know, accomplish what you know. I mean, very few people that play this game ever get to do. And now you come back here next year and and you at least you get to carry that aura that you've got one. So how did did that change your mentality at all coming down here this year? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I had a very interesting experience after winning the bracelet last year. After winning the bracelet, I bricked 12 tournaments, and I realized that I had winner's tilt. And what happened was, hmm. in the event that I won, I just kept winning every hand, and that's why you know I was able to go on and win the thing. I just was used to, every time I was all in, winning. Obviously, you have to when yeah. you win the tournament. and 
when I came back to play every tournament after that one at last year's series, somehow my mentality was I wasn't making folds that I normally would just because there was something inside me just saying when the money goes in, I'm going to win. And so hmm. I wasn't playing at my best for those tournaments after the bracelet. And I learned a lesson from that. And I, I know now that next time I win something, be careful not to get that winner's tilt. So that was was an interesting experience for me. Wow, that's a great lesson for everybody yeah. out there. I mean, I, I would never really thought of that. But, yeah, you kind of you just get in that mode where it's like, hey, well, I'm, yeah, I got it, man. This is mine. Definitely, you know? definitely. I felt like I couldn't be beat. Yeah, and, and by the way, you Canadians couldn't get beat last year. That's right. I don't know. Have we have we nailed anything this year yet? Not I guess yet. not. not but yet. Vanessa Selps just trying to take everything. So. We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> Vanessa, congratulations <laughs> to her. That is incredible. Um, she is just, you know, she, she's she got to be in the running for player of the year now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, when you look at somebody like Vanessa Selps, and, you know, I mean, you're out there on the circuit all the time. You see these guys day in and day out. If you had to put her... In a, in a ranking right now as to who the best player in the world is. Where where do you put her? Okay, so I'm going to uh, put my boy Negreanu at number one. Okay, like to me, Daniel's the clear number one player in the world right now. And, you know, he's always had a lot of detractors, and, you know, I would argue with any of them. You know, everyone says Ivy, but I'm going to take my boy Negreanu at number one. And, oh, man, I mean, it's hard after that. Uh, I love Antonio, too, so i got to put him up at the top. And definitely Vanessa and, and Ivy, you know, those, to me, those are the top players right now. I don't know who else. I mean, uh, Oli Shimeon, I mean, he's just come onto the scene. But let's see what he does in his first year at the World Series. But, yeah, Vanessa, I, I, for sure in the top five. I don't know where, but in the top five for sure. Yeah, I think it's a pretty fair assessment. Yeah, speaking of Oli, man, boy, he's been tearing people apart. Hasn't yeah, he? I mean, that's just sick. He's 21 years old, and, you know, I hadn't even played a hand of no limit yet when I was 21 years old. So, <laughs> I mean, he's probably played millions of them online, uh, you know, and that's just what he's accomplished to this point. And now just turning 21, that's that's pretty cool. You know, he has a chance to do great things. Yeah. Well, so do you. We got a we got a long World Series to go. Yet, I'm right? ready to go. You know, like I, I wish the events would come faster. Like I just busted the one K. I got to wait till tomorrow for the 1500 six max. And I don't play anything other than no limit. So I got to wait for that one. I got to start learning some of these other, uh, you know, styles of poker so yeah. that I can play more tournaments. You've got to. I mean, yeah. you know, with with I mean, especially if you're bracelet hunting. You know, a lot of players, as they go through their careers, realize that they've, they've got to start picking up the, these mixed games to have more opportunities you know, to, to win bracelets. I mean, you know, it's not a, it's something that you can go all over the circuit and get to play a lot of mixed games events. But here, you know, it's, it's such a, a – the door's wide open. I mean, there's tend to be tougher fields sometimes. But it's a great opportunity if you want to start uh, doing what Phil Helmy's doing to – thousand percent you know that's what needs to be done and that's you know the the fields are so much smaller you know phil helmuth's in there right now at that final table i was just watching that a little bit and that's incredible looking for his 14th bracelet um i would definitely love to be in some of these events that have like 100 people in them you know i'm i'm playing no limit where my events have anywhere from you know i guess what's the you know, anywhere from 150 for the 25K, which I actually didn't play, which I'm, you know, I, I wish I would have. Uh, you know, tomorrow I'll play the six max. It'll have at least a thousand people, 1500, and most of them have two or three thousand. So, yeah, I, I definitely want to start learning uh, the mixed games, and and that's my next move. Well, now that you're mostly here in Vegas, I'll have you come over. We'll play a little Omaha. I'll get you squared up. All right, you'll teach me. <laughs> I'm sure you'll teach me a, a cheap lesson. How much? Uh, how much are we going to play for? Uh, maybe a buck. About a buck? A buck or two, yeah. All right, good. Uh, that's a cheap <laughs> lesson. I'll yeah, take it. Done. I'm in. All right. Well, Justin, best of luck the rest of the World Series. All right. I'm Mark, sure I'll it, see you again It's soon. great to see you. Good and you uh, hopefully when I walk by the next time, I won't look so confused. Yeah, that's all right. It's all right. Well, tell Josh we said hi to. I will. Have a all good right. day, brother. Good buddy. <laughs> take care. Justin Oliver there joining us here on the Mark Oak Show. One of the most grateful bracelet winners you're ever going to see, man. He is a terrific guy and uh, thrilled to have him uh, hanging out here at the World Series again. Sounds like he's uh, got a little bit of extra time, yeah. Yeah, wind tilt is real. Wookie Wave putting that in the chat box. That is a, a great assessment from him. Of course, Justin did win that bracelet fairly early in the World Series last year and then, uh, you know, said he really struggled with that. So some pretty fascinating stuff there from Justin Oliver. All right, so we're hanging around here. We're going to see if we can get, uh, get one of our bracelet winners on. Joe Payne is hanging out down at the bracelet ceremony. Hopefully we'll get to talk to Joe and uh, maybe get a special guest on here 
pretty soon. But, uh, yeah, but once again, thank you for listening to the Mark Hoke Show. Uh, of course, we're here every day, 1 o'clock to 3 and uh, 6.30 to 8, bringing you the live, live reporting from the World Series of Poker, all the action going on here at the WSOP. And, uh, of course, uh, tonight we do have one more event coming up. We did have the uh, the 1K starting off this afternoon or this morning. Uh, we are also going to be heading into a, uh, let's see, I'm sorry about that, uh, event 10 uh, coming up, the uh, 10K no uh, limit, excuse me, limit Omaha high-low split eight or better event. So one of those opportunities for some of these top guys to pick up another possible world championship starting today. Uh, let's get you up to date on what else is happening here at the World Series of Poker. Of course, we do have a couple events rolling, and, you know, of course, the. let's take a look at that. Uh, give me one second here. We'll pick one of these events out for you. Start kind of getting caught up. I want prize pool. We need to get on. Ta-da. Bear with me for a second. Uh, wrong tournament. I'll get it. I promise, everybody. Bear with me. So this is where this is where having a producer is really great. Uh, the No Limit Hold'em Shootout, which started off with 12 players today, uh, just getting restarted a little while ago, but we have uh, we've lost a couple players in there. So two down already. Uh, final table is at nine, and we lost Stephen Giralis, who is one of the short stacks. But Jared Jaffe has been eliminated as well, as well, and that is a that is a huge obstacle out of the way for Josh Ari to possibly win that bracelet. So uh, Jared Jaffe out here at the World Series of Poker, and oh, I think I, I think we have a very happy person. Very happy. I think we I think we have a very happy person here. Even once. Give me one second here. We'll get all my uh, get all my numbers squared away. Yep, and I'm 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 really trying to get all my uh, info for that event up on my screen, and it's uh, being a pain in the butt. So bear with me for one second. But how's that how's that bracelet going? Oh, pretty excited about that. Oh man, I'll tell you what, Brandon, that, that was a very interesting final table for you. Take us through. That, that last run to where you eventually won the bracelet? Um, Maybe a little closer. Sure. On the there we go. Uh, yeah, all my tables were really hard, actually. Uh, I had uh, Steve Bilirakis, uh, Mr. Smokey Online, mm -hmm. who's a very well-respected player. Uh, he was to my direct left, and he had a ton of chips. So that was... Um, that wasn't that didn't help my comfort level much. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I felt I felt pretty good about how I was playing. I was trying to keep things small. Um, I felt like I, I could kind of control. Um, I control control the pot size pretty well, um, and I, I was trying to do that like the whole tournament series. Really, uh, just pick my spots to have big pots in. Um, so this table, uh, aside from him, uh, just being there with with a ton of experience, like. Uh, I wasn't really sweating it any more than I was. I was sweating any of my other tables. I had just a ton of super like tough players. Um, people slowly started to bust out. I beat Steve in a really big hand. Um, cooler situation on the flop. Uh, I got I got lucky to hold. Um, and then when it was three-handed, by the time uh, by the time they each had like six hundred thousand, um, and I had, I had a two-to-one chip advantage on the table. Um, they were, they were kind of playing for for a second at the time. Pay jumps were pretty big, yeah. so it, it, it was it was a really good time for me to kind of put pressure on them uh, until we got heads up. When we got heads up, uh, Morgan made a uh, good comeback, and then uh, and then we played a really big pot, and I got lucky. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a pretty wild heads up match because you know you did come in with that big lead, Brandon, and then uh, all of a sudden you know Morgan kind of took a chunk out. Yeah, I mean, you know, and and you had to be feeling really good up until that point. What Change, did anything change in your head after that hand happened that you know he started to pull back on you a little bit and you know. um no i i feel like 
I'm pretty good at keeping an even keel disposition about the situations that are that are taking place. I was just trying to take my time and be cognizant of uh, my stack and his stack and um, maybe see if he's making any adjustments. Um, he had a rail full of really good players uh, who were giving him some advice. Part of me was like wishing I were fly in that little huddle. Um, <laughs> you know, I wasn't sure yeah. if, if their advice was something, uh, the adjustments that they're recommending him, he, he, he was was to make uh was to be making uh that he was actually implementing them sorry my grammar was very poor there. that's okay um you just want a bracelet who cares yeah yeah um <laughs> yeah so uh, i wasn't happy about it but like the the pot sizes were so small that um i knew i could take a couple things like that they were they were pretty standard coolers or i just missed flops like i had been doing pretty well with hitting flops and getting away with things uh, long enough that i was i was due to like you know have someone have someone cooler me pretty good um yeah and, and had he beat me in that big that big pot uh he would have taken a two to one chip advantage on me so that made that made me feel pretty all right like um super big cooler you know i could i could easily by then if had pots been bigger be busted had i lost that hand but even even if i would have lost that hand i, I still would be able to fight back um so i was feeling pretty good about everything a little nervous when we started heads up at first i know he's a plo guy and my heads up plo is, is a little bit rusty um but calm down pretty quickly it's hard to get that heads up plo experience isn't it i mean that's you know you're playing you can get it online a you know, fair amount but doing it live it's uh, it's not the easiest thing to do to get to play heads up all the yeah, time. yeah you don't get to do it live much um actually kind of kind of interesting um well I'm, I'm gonna go on a bunch of tangents maybe uh I did play a bunch of, of Heads Up PLO online for a bit. I went to Montreal. Uh, there's a guy named Martin Bradstreet, mm -hmm. who's uh, Alexei Martov online, Magic Ninja. He's a really good friend of mine. He plays music as well, and he's friends with some mutual friends of mine. Um, there's a recording engineer named Steve Albini who runs a, a spot in Chicago. He's just, um, like a, a, a legend. Um, he's like one of my best friends. I'm so lucky. Uh, so Martin came to record with Steve and we just got along really well. We both played music. Um, and we kept in touch. I went up to Montreal. T I, I kind of wanted to see if maybe I wanted to live somewhere outside of Chicago. So I went up to Montreal for a bit, um, to check out Montreal, play music. Um, Martin's just, Martin's got like the whole Montreal music scene running through his, his loft space, which is like so sick. Um, <laughs> so, uh, he kind of gave me the option to to talk some PLO when when there was time. There were a couple days where like he, he would spend an hour or two like looking over my heads up play and you know like uh, giving me some affirmations, which which made me feel more confident about my play or or telling me like he might want to try this or something, you know. So uh, that made me I channeled some of the Martin Bradstreet energy into wow. into heads up, which was great. Um, <sighs> And then uh, I hadn't been able to play much outside of that. I, I also got a chance to go um, hang out with Vanessa Selbst in New York, who's a, a friend of mine. Um, we wanted to talk about mixed games a little bit and go through everything. Um, so we got a little bit of time to, to play some play money online. That, that was fun. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, cr and freakishly crazy that the two of us happened to win a bracelet the same day. Yeah. Like, it was pretty amazing. Like I felt like it was like uh, like we were like a Hunger Games team or something like that. Um, <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so super stoked for her, and yeah, it was super cool. So that last card hits, and you win a bracelet. I mean, what was going through your head? I felt bad for the guy. Like, <laughs> isn't that isn't that weird? Like, I felt just so bad for the guy because he like fought back. I mean, it's crazy because we played like day, all of day two and day three together, and like he had like nothing, and he like just nursed that stack and picked his spots and um and uh, like one of my biggest flaws as a poker player is like i mean i've given people money back that i've beaten them out of like you know if they're having like a super hard time or like maybe i don't raise them on the river if i know i've just got them owned and they're getting destroyed um i i'm just like natural i just naturally like feel for people like i'm like kind of like overly empathetic to a fault like as far as a poker player is concerned mm -hmm. so like so I beat this guy in a pot where like he gets it in good and it's like a totally standard spot. Like he could have like he could have anything. The fact that I had like an ace block, I had like ace king king five, I think. Um and he had aces, of course. Um I had an ace blocker in my hand, so I felt really good to go with it. But even if I didn't like I mean, his three betting range could be like some kind of any kind of rundown, double suited rundowns, whatever. Like I, I'm I'm okay against his range, it's like a standard thing. But like 
I hate beating a guy like that. I hate having to suck out on a guy, you know, like to, to win a bracelet. Um, so part of me was like, I don't know. As soon as that happened, like, I just know he was devastated. And like, if I, if I win a big pot from somebody in our game or something like that, and they're getting, they're getting beat up, like, I mean, I don't celebrate in general. I, you know, I just grab my chips and collect them and, you know, try to, uh, give them a quiet little quiet time to kind of get over it. Um, and that, that was pretty much what happened with Morgan. Like, uh, he got it in super good, got really unlucky. I won a bracelet, and, like, I just felt bad. For, I, felt, I felt really bad for him. So it, it took a while. It took until, like, it took until, like, my friends, like, kind of smacked me around, and they were like, dude, what's your problem? Like, are you stupid? He just, like, won a bracelet to, to, to crack a smile. Um, I felt like I couldn't celebrate until, like, I don't know, and I just felt guilt, you know. And my mom was my mom was Catholic, so it's just like Catholic. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. A, yeah, 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 that's that's where that comes from. So now, now I feel great about it. Okay, good, <laughs> good. So, so now you know an affirmation to your poker career, all the hard work. Uh, man, it's it had to feel good to get that bracelet in your hand today, didn't it? Mm, must have been fun. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Um, the ceremony was actually supposed to be yesterday for Vanessa and I. Um, I thought the million maker started at a at a 11:15 instead of a, instead of 12:15. So the ceremony I thought was at 2:15. It was really at 1:15. Uh, I was kind of bummed out I didn't get to stand up there with with Vanessa, you know, so we could both like take some pictures together or whatever. But but I know had I done that, like somehow Vanessa would have won my break, bracelet off me like by proxy or something like that. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she'd have found a way to pull it like, off. So me sick, too. you know. I don't know. Um, I'm so, I, now I kind of forget forget the question. I think I answered it, but you're I kind of fun. forgot it. You're, hey, you're in a great <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so are you going to take a little time to celebrate tonight or is back to the grind? Yeah, I don't. Um, I'm not really a big partier. We've got, like, anywhere from 8 to 13 people in our, our house. Um, we're studying pretty hard. I'm really lucky to be in a house with these guys. Uh, this is the Sometimes It's Worth a House house, a.k.a. Casa Swingo. Swingo <laughs> being the game that Steve Albini uh, created, we play back at home. Um, I the, the the ever since I've been here, I haven't gotten more than like four hours sleep. So uh, until today, like today, I finally slept like seven hours, and I, I went straight from playing the PLO because um, day two PLO played down to six players instead of like stopping at a final table. Right. Um, had we stopped at a final table on day three, I may not have been able to play the Raz, which is one of my favorite games, oddly enough. Um, I didn't want to miss that. I shouldn't have played because I was delirious and like I, I didn't I didn't play so so great. Um, but I really wanted to, and I got that opportunity because because we played down to six on day two. Um, so I, I went from from that straight into Raz. Uh, so no time really to rest, uh, and then played the Millionaire Maker yesterday. Um, I skipped one A because I just couldn't handle it, um, and got a good night's sleep. And I, I know I just want to kind of get my life back on track for a little bit and then finish grinding. Uh, I, yeah, I got a full schedule. So yep. that, those are my plans. Well, Brandon, congratulations on winning the biggest PLO tournament in history. Thanks so much. So Thanks awesome. for having me on your yeah, show. Yeah, you got the bracelet? You want to show that to everybody? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, here we go. We got we to gotta bust that hardware out. Of course, uh, Brandon went event number three, the Pot Lemon Omaha tournament. And, right, uh, so whoa, whoa. this is the box you get. <laughs> there you go. You'll open that and get another box. You'll open that this way, get a bracelet. You'll turn the bracelet upside down, or right side <laughs> up rather, and now it's upside down. And then i got to flip it that way, and then it looks like this. There it is, everybody. That is beautiful. And it sounds like this. And it's going to look good on your wrist. Are you going to wear it into a tournament, or are you going to hide it? I don't know. No. I don't know. I might, you don't I might seem just like sit in the closet with it and, <laughs> like, talk, talk to it in my spare time. But I'm not really a flashy guy, you know. Uh, that's I'm awesome. a modest, like, wolf-wearing-a-tie kind of guy. Very, <laughs> very cool. Well, Brandon, congratulations. Thanks so on much. Winning World Series of Poker Bracelet. I'm sure maybe we'll see some more from you here at the WSO. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Not a problem, Thanks. buddy. Take care, guys. Good luck. Good luck. There you go. Brandon Shaq Harris, the winner of event number three, and he is uh, one happy guy. I'd be too. It's happy. all good. Yeah, drink up, man. Have a good time. <laughs> we need to have some booze over here when we have the bracelet winners over. Yeah, we got to get some champagne. Enjoy the good. rest of your show. You got it. Thank you.
This is the fun of the World Series of Poker, getting to meet all these guys you know, right after they get handed that bracelet. It is something of a very special time. Yep. Yeah, we'll have them up on the videos up on YouTube too, so. I'll, I'll tweet it out, so. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So there you go. Kyle Cartwright probably hiding, but Joe. Got to enjoy a bracelet ceremony. Let's uh, say hi to Joey's coming back in here. Great job, Joe. Thank you very much. All righty. Uh, that, was a, that was a pretty easy gig. Uh, the other bracelet winner, as Nolan Dahl told us. Uh, Kyle's kind of a shy guy. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he even said, it's nothing personal. I just, I'm not really big on doing anything radio, TV. I'm like, okay. I said, I, I was already told you probably would say no to me. And he goes, no, no, not to you, just to everyone. Yeah, it's all good. But, but Brandon is... That's you know, a great he, kid. I'll he tell was you refreshing what. to listen to. I mean, there's not too many poker players who feel bad after they beat you in a pot. Yeah. Especially in a bracelet event like, hey, this is a doggy dog world. He's, I mean, he's got the wolf shirt on, but in actuality, he's not. He's a well dressed wolf. Yeah. And a, and a kind wolf. Yeah. I took your chips. I'm sorry. You know, it's unusual. Yeah, that's very unusual. Yeah, I mean, and that's you know that's a hard refreshing. Situation. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get a, you know, you, when you win the brace, I think, I think whenever any of us visualize that moment, and and there's no poker player that can cannot say that they have not fantasized about that. That everybody hand, wants to be there, you know, yeah. that you know, it you, takes you out. You get the money. You don't think about putting a bad beat on somebody. No, but if it happens, know? it happens. Yeah, I mean, I mean what are you gonna do? How many times have you been on the other side of of the coin, so to speak, Absolutely. and gotten the beat, and you know, get it in good and get get beat? Scotty Wynn going by. Hey, Scotty, how you doing? What's up, baby? You call, you lose, baby. Oh, awesome guy there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it's good to yeah, good to see you know these. That's the kind of guy you like to see win. Yeah, you know, and you like to see him win continuously, whether it's even a, a non bracelet event. He's just sincere, down to earth. He's a Chicago Blackhawk fan. We we had a small hockey conversation <laughs> on the way over. I said I'm rooting for your team to play us, and he and he's originally from Wisconsin, so he said he's more. A Wisconsin fan, Green Bay, and but but you know he's kind of into hockey now. How could you not be into hockey? But wow, well, Brandon, good job, man. And uh, I would believe to say that I would be safe to say he's going to be a great ambassador for poker. Yeah, I mean just that's that's, just, a, that's a kid that's got his head on his shoulders. That's yep. for sure. So musician I, too. Did you know that? Yeah, I. You know what? He, you know what? I bet he's going to do. I think he will lock himself in a closet with that. <laughs> That's I think funny. he will. I think he's got to get a little flashlight and just sit there and go, yeah. If you want a bracelet lock, would you wear it? Every once in a while. Every I once in a while. Would you wear it, it to a tournament? I think do, you think you're putting a, do you think you're putting a target on yourself by having that bracelet on? Because everyone wants to say, I took out a, a bracelet winner. I'm well, curious to if a, I, you know, if you ever win one. point, but, you know, I think there's also a little, there's a little intimidation factor there, too. You know, I mean, I know I know some guys that you know will never wear it out in a tournament or anything. And there's guys that want to want to let you know, um, yeah, I've got one of these. It's it's an interesting aspect as to do you put it on or you not put it on. I'm a, I don't I, know. I think I I think I'd wear it for a while. You know, just uh, you know, just uh, I think you be I think you make yourself a mock player if you put if you you wear it to an event. You know, I think you're just saying, hey, I'm a champion. Come get me. I'd wear it to the Nevada Poker League. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be funny. Oh my! We've had God. bracelet with it. You brought yep. one recently. I did. Dutch Boyd, who's got an incredible book. It does. Yeah, it's a uh, poker tilt. Doc, you know, go to poker tilt. dot com. You can pick yep. it up. But it is an incredible. Like the way I segue that stuff right. Yeah. In. Like See, that, that's man. that's what we do. That's what we do. Oh, but yeah. So great to have a uh, Brandon Shack Harris joining us here on the Mark Hoke Show and. Uh, We'll have more bracelet winners as the time goes by. Just it, it was really cool to having Brandon on. Yeah. Almost as cool as God, this Arctic, Arctic Blue, Blue cooling towel. <laughs> These are now. What time did you wet this this morning? Last night. This I have is not from yet. last night. I haven't wet it yet today. Wow. With water, kids. With water. Wow, this is refreshing too. Like if you pass out, this might this might make you come too. Yeah. And this is from last night. Last night. Wow. Arctic Blue. There you go. Wow. So, hey, what what a great show we had today, Joe. Holy buckets. You know, Justin Oliver stopping by where you were gone. Greg Mueller popping in. Lane Flack calling him out. <laughs> I mean. Uh, bracelet. 
We had our first 2014 bracelet winner on the show. Yep. We've had a number of bracelet winners swing by, sit down for a short stop by, so to speak, or fly by, as we call yeah. it. Yeah. But uh, big things are gonna on their way. Yeah, and of course we're gonna be back tonight, 6:30 p.m. You will be back tonight. Oh, I will be back. Yeah. Well, we use a Mark Hoke uh, show. Unfortunately, I, I have. Uh, Scotty getting some fan fanboy. Scotty attention. always gets love. Thank you, baby. Scotty always gets love. There's no way not to love Scotty, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> he just gives you the finger. Yeah. Right? He knows me. He's all right. But uh, yeah, we're uh, so we're gonna be back on this evening, and we'll have some updates. You have, any, you have anything planned special for our audience this evening? Uh not yet. But of course, we've got a couple shoot. You know, we got the shootout going on. Uh, should be down to a final table here pretty shortly. Phil Helmuth chasing bracelet number 14 this afternoon. I mean, it is going to be That's impressive. a whale of a day. And, of course, this millionaire maker, millionaire maker is still going on, too. It will be the, going on. The blood is spilling in the room as we speak. It's like Game of Thrones. The Game of Thrones finale is today, too, so that kind of, for the season. So that kind of works out as a nice little, uh, you know, all-out melee. <laughs> Never watched an episode of that. Oh, you guys, is it good? Oh, you'll really? love it. Really? Oh, you love it. Yeah, there's a lot of pain, blues, agony, and nudity and sex too. So it's perfect. Uh, right up your alley. Yeah. You always somehow get the word sex in. Well, you have to. See, that's what everybody listens to. I could sit here and talk about things for four hours. They and don't want to listen to sex. Sudden, no, they don't want to listen to sex. They want to see sex. Well, they don't want to see my sex. That's not okay. good. That's why? Not good. Why is that? Oh, well, I keep that to myself. I don't want I don't want all my fans' wives to start chasing me down and leaving their husbands. Oh, I thought you were saying that your sex is not. No, no, no. It's it, it's quite up to par. Thank you very much. Really? Yeah. Is it above the, above the bar? I would I would say above the bar. Wow. I didn't I didn't marry a, a woman sixteen years younger than me because of my riches. Is your wife sixteen years yeah, younger? Yeah, you know. Than I didn't know yeah. that. I did not yeah. know that. Did you uh, do you report to the Bureau of Child Welfare? No, Joe, 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 she. Sixteen okay. years. Oh my God! Oh, I'll tell you what. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this <laughs> up before this goes too far. But we'll be back tonight at six thirty p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Please join us. And of course, uh, videos will be up on YouTube, so you can check out all the great interviews and everything we've been doing here at the WSOP. Not everything. Well, not everything. Not but everything. Well, you don't have to watch me set up a booth. You'd, you'd have like to go that. to that special section of YouTube where you have to verify your age to be yeah, able to watch it, this video. Exactly. Because it, it, it contains explicit material. We're done, everybody. <laughs> hey, thank, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tonight. Uh, have a great time, and uh, we'll be back later on. Have a good night. Take care.